How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave, and this is post episode one for Maple Farms. How is everybody doing tonight? I hope everybody's had a fantastic day so far. Oh my goodness, it is so good to be back. So glad to be on a new map. Hopefully, one that will be a little bit more friendly to the channel. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But let's see who's out there. Jody, hey bud, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day so far. Let's see, how you doing? Uh, Hillbilly Farmer says, uh, Hello Big Daddy Dave, how are you this evening? Hope everything is good for your family. Uh, it has been an interesting uh, couple of days. Been very, very interesting, but um, overall good. Good. Thank you for asking. I hope you are having a fantastic day as well, Hillbilly Farmer. How are you doing today? Uh, Hillbilly Farmer also says, hi, Jody. And Jody says, how is your day? My day, like I said, it's been, uh, my day is, today has been great. Past couple of days has kind of been a wash, a little bit up, a little bit down. But we're, we're finally into the good. We're, we're, we're um, you know, things have finally kind of leveled off. Everything's fine. Just uh, not not going to get into the details uh, right right now because we're just kind of seeing how things go. But uh, so far, everything's good. Everything's good. So we'll just kind of go with that for right now. Uh, Jody says, congratulations on the thousand. Thank you. Yes, this is the first stream post. 1,000 subscribers. I am so excited that we have gotten there. It is just an amazing milestone to cross. And now I just want to keep on chugging along. I just want to keep on pushing. Like I've said it several times now, got to keep up the good work. And, and you know, obviously people are, are taking notice and I'm really happy about that. So thank you all so very, very much for, for being there for the channel, being here for these live streams. I greatly appreciate it. Let's see. Uh, good day for Jody. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And Hillbilly Farmer says, uh, we are good here. And <laughs> Hillbilly Acres. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. We're going to wait a few more minutes before we get rolling on this stream. See if anybody else comes and join us. If you're out there in the chat right now go ahead and let yourself be known i have no way of being able to tell that you're out there unless i actually see some kind of message pop up on the screen so like i said we're just gonna wait eh, maybe one two more minutes and see if anybody else joins us here unfortunately silly me i had been planning on doing this stream well probably since about i don't know about 12 one o'clock is when i put out all the notification on every single social media that i have except for setting up the stream that says hey that uh, this stream's actually going to happen at this time and this date and all that stuff yeah i forgot to set that up it's been a it's been a busy busy few days so yeah yeah it's uh it's been a good uh dust bunny hey how's it going says good evening uh or evening big d every uh let's see Evening, Hillbilly Farming. Evening, Jody and wife. Uh, next goal is 2,000. 100%. Yep, that is absolutely the next goal. Really hoping that we can get there, but I'm, I'm just glad that we're here. Like I said, I'm just thankful and grateful that uh, that we got to 1,000 and going to keep up, keep on putting in the hard work, putting in the putting in the effort to, to get us there, but only time will tell. How are you doing today, Dust Bunny? I want to, uh, okay, so let's see. There's going to be one, two, at least three topics tonight that I want to discuss. And you know what? We'll go ahead and get going now. So we are finally on a new map. Finally. Um, Hills of Tuscany was... A really good map and I really like that map I've said numerous times time and time and time again that there are so many issues so many problems and finally one day and, and I'd made a video about this um, and for anybody who hasn't seen it I'll go ahead and just kind of quickly overview and go from there but basically what had happened is 
one day I had signed in and nothing. It just, every single map on every single thing, I couldn't access my Hills of Tuscany. I couldn't access a new save game on Hills of Tuscany. I couldn't access even Elm Creek or any of the bare basic uh, stuff. So I went through the painful, painful task of trying to figure out what it was that was broken. It was it was obviously a mod conflict. Because what I ended up doing was first things first, I went ahead and deleted or not deleted, but unchecked all the mods that I had for that map, and it let me in. I was able to get into any map I wanted as long as I unchecked the mods. So I'm like, okay, so it's obvious a mod conflict. I've got to figure this out. And as I'm diving through, and I've got what feels to be hundreds of mods and I'm going row by row by row to see if I can isolate it and of course it's Zuttlezox wholesale uh, that a lot of people are having issues with um, but I think I caught it early on where I didn't I didn't see anybody else kind of posting about it I had made a couple of posts on Facebook and, and other places to see if anybody was having the same issue as I was um, but it wasn't until the next day um, after I'd spent about three and a half hours just going line by line and realizing, oh, well, I was able to get into the map after removing one of Zuttlezok mods. Um, it was the... It wasn't the wholesaler, believe it or not. That was what was surprising about... Uh, surprising to me. Where do I have to go? 58... Um, okay, I know where I gotta go. So, it was one other mod, and I I unchecked it, was able to get into it, and it's like, okay, great. Uh, I But I spent all evening one night just trying to figure out what mod it was, and after I found it and was able to get into everything, I was like, okay, th that's the mod. I, I just uninstalled it and was good to go from there. Not an issue. Then I came back the next day, and that's when I saw people starting to post about the wholesale mod from Zuttlezok. And that wasn't the mod that I uninstalled in order to uh, make the game work again. And it was weird. It was so wild. Um, but after, after I had gone back the next day to try and get into my save game... Again, started failing, was reading about the wholesaler, so I uninstalled the wholesaler, and it started working again. So wasn't really questioning it that much. So I, got, I ended up leaving. I, had, I was during work. Um, I had a break for, for a little bit, so I ended up just kind of, you know, hopping on real quick and hopping back out. Oh, is this my turn? No, this isn't. Oh, it is my turn. Whoops. I'm still learning this. Oh, there's a car. Still learning this map. So after all that, I went back in and again, went through the painstaking task after work of trying to find the mod that was the issue. And eventually, you know, got to the wholesale, delete or, or yeah, deleted the wholesale and went on my merry way and then it seemed fine everything was working just fine so i ended up i think that was when i made episode 22 yeah i think that's when i made episode 22 and was fine and dandy i was getting ready to work on doing a live stream for post episode 22 or getting ready to no that was what it was i was getting ready to record 23 and when i went to record 23 that's when i had another issue even after all the updates for zuttlezot came out for the wholesale mod and all that stuff so it was at that point in time where i was like okay this i cannot keep fighting this i can't keep spending three plus hours a night trying to diagnose and figure out what um mod it is that's creating conflict here I just need to, to call it quits. So that's when I decided to record, you know, what was the finale of episode 23. And like I said, in that video, I'm more than willing to pick it back up if one of two things happens. Either Zuttlezox 
fixes their mods, which here's the thing is I'm not even convinced that it's necessarily an issue with Zuttlezok mods as much as it is just an issue with that map. I've had so many issues with that map that it just kind of wouldn't surprise me if it was more the map than it was the mods. So that's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. Um, but we'll kind of see. Let me catch up with the chat once I get the worker going here. Let's see. We'll go here and pow. Pan that. Ooh, I'm really far over. There we go. How's this one? Ooh, that's a... Well, you know what? We'll just... Fire them up going in this direction. And then I'll do one... One going east and west. At the other end. And then just keep going in this direction. Because that should give me enough of a buffer between the road and field. Yeah, see. Oof. Ugh, I was afraid of that. Yep, headland it is. Oh, you know what? Um, boop. And yes, we're on the lowest setting. Perfect. All right, so let me take a look at the chat and see what everyone's saying thus far. Uh, we've got Hillbilly Farmer saying good evening to Dust Bunny. Jody says uh, this is a pretty good map. You know what? I really love this map. Um, I actually spoke to Cavalier Roy, the map maker of this, quite some time ago. Actually, probably around the time when this first released. And we had, had like a back and forth about uh, the map. And it was in response to the tour that I did. And I think it was specifically that I was confused about some sort of thing or I mis misspoke about some feature that was on the map and Kevlar Roy was nice enough to to reach out and correct me and it was just one of those where you know after kind of sitting down and, and really getting a chance to you know tinker around on this map and realizing just how customizable that this map is above a lot of the other maps that we get access to it's just one of those I was really looking forward to for a very long time to be able to come on and, and do a uh, let's play but like I said the what kind of trumped that whole you know ambition to do the let's play on this previously was I wanted to do grapes and I specifically wanted a map that would do grapes as a standard that's why I picked Hills of Tuscany over this one this was going to be the last uh series but it got edged out because i was really wanting to do grapes um yeah and we see how that one all played out uh let's see uh dust bunny says hope you and your family are doing well we are doing good um had a rough couple of days uh and at this point in time, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to get into too much detail as to what's going on at the moment. Uh, but details will be coming. Just not not right this second. Um, just It's just one of those that uh, we're just kind of seeing how things go and kind of go from there. And I, I apologize for being cryptic about it but just know that everything's fine everything's going good just wanted to you know kind of kind of keep it close to the chest for now and, and wait and see how time progresses kind of go from there but like i said everything's fine right now uh and so going back to what i was saying about the zuttles left mods that leads me to give a special thank you to Dust Bunny. Dust Bunny, thank you so much for going through the effort you did on trying to put me in touch with Zuttlezok to explain what was going on. I haven't heard anything as of yet from Zuttlezok. That's not to say that I won't, um, just as of right now. But I really appreciate you going above and beyond trying to reach out and, you know, 
get us in touch so I can explain what's going on. Like I said, I'm very skeptical that it's the uh, that it's the mods fault and more leaning towards the map because I have the same exact mod set that I have on this map as I did on Hills of Tuscany. And with all the issues that I was having on Hills of Tuscany, um, it, it just it would absolutely shock me that the, that the mod was the issue kind of thing. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm hesitant to be like, oh yeah, I really want to really want to talk to Zuttlezacht and really kind of use up their time because I don't necessarily think that it's their issue to deal with. I think it's more the map makers. Uh, issue but i could be wholly wrong about that because i'm not a modder i have no idea that's just my my guess let's see uh dust bunny says zuttlezoct has already updated the wholesale point yes yes uh they have and i have it i believe i have it back on my uh list here uh john brock says hi hey john how are you doing tonight hope you're having a great uh day so far dust bunny says evening mr john brock hope you're well sir I'm doing fine. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Uh, Dust Bunny also says, The animal pens on your farm have huge pastures. Really nice to see how many cows, sheep, and horses are available for each. Well, let's go check that out real quick. Whoops. So what's really nice about this farm or this map is every single one of these. So you've got the farm that I took over here. Your main starting farm is actually right here. This is what you start out with. You start out with all these grass fields, every single one here. You also have a farm here, a farm here, a farm here, here, and here. But let's go check out my farm real quick. So starting with the cows. Now, there is something going on with this map. I don't understand what's going on right now. But you can see, I spent, for anybody who's watched episode one, right now up to this point you know that i spent all episode working on this and i'll tell you what that was like four and a half hours worth of work like in real time and you can see grass is ready to harvest i don't know what's going on but as i leave i save the uh, do the save game i come back in and it's regrown i don't know why so I don't know if I need to like plow this out and replant it with, you know, fresh grass to see if maybe that kind of triggers something. I'm not sure, but this is technically a field. As you can see, I have field info. I can pull up uh, environmental scores and all that stuff for this area. It's just for some reason, it's allowing me to, to recut this and get even more product. <laughs> don't know. I have no clue. No idea. But at the end of the day, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to plow it out and, and start over again to see if that triggers it to work properly. Um, if it doesn't, if it's just going to keep regrowing and regrowing, then what I'll do is I'll go through the normal growth cycle of grass and will only cut it every, what, two months, three months? Uh, for I think it's every three months for stage two and then take off the winter months to you know simulate that growth. So that, that's the worst case scenario. So going back to what uh, Dust Bunny was saying. So the cow barn here, it's one with a feeding robot. I'm looking forward to that. 1,000 cows. 1,000. Every single cow barn, every single chicken pasture, pig pen, everything on here is elevated in such a way. So that's 1,000 cows there. And it's nice because it has all these nice custom fields here that you can just, you know, utilize. And, and, and all the sheep and cows, they roam the entirety of the pasture. It's really cool. That's, that's one thing that kind of drew me to this map. 800 sheep. 1,000 chickens. As you can see, I've got silage a going and then last i think it's 16 horses yeah 16 horses so yeah it's you've got tons of room and every single farm is like this and what's really cool what i really like about this map 
is you can kind of parcel out purchases for farms and stuff. So like 184 here is just a building kind of thing. This is the main farm kind of kind of thing. In the back here, 151 is the pig pen. I think this is the chicken pasture, or chicken barn. Um, this I believe is the cow pasture, and this is the sheep pasture. So like, and you have to purchase these individually in order to get access to those uh, animal pens and stuff. So it's one of those. It's really cool, but none of them. Look at it, forty-seven or forty-six thousand dollars. It's cheap. It's not unapproachable. You know, so it's one of those you can just get a good chunk of money and then buy the farm or buy a part of it and then kind of build it up as you go. So it's really nice in that regards. Um, here, let's. Oops. Uh... Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to back up until we. Uh... That's all right. And just finish this one out. I didn't even mean to leave them going in this direction. I actually meant to go north and south. Not a big deal, though. Let's see. What is everyone saying? Uh, John says, doing well. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Uh, let's go over here. Wait, am I all done or am I just wasting fertilizer? Oh, I am just wasting fertilizer. Oops. Well, that's okay. Turn that off. And, oops. Go to the next one. So, let's see. Next one is 83. Which which one's 83? Oh, that's right. That's the one I really... <laughs> so, I'll be honest. I had to go through and kind of pre-plan routes earlier today. It, 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 the map isn't this map is not straightforward when it comes to getting to field the field like you saw I had to cut through um, the one farm in the north in order just to get whoa hey there's a pallet there uh, had to cut through the farm in order to get to that field that's the only way in and out that's that's it so it's one of those kind of you've really got to pre-plan where you're going and unfortunately the one complaint that I can levy against this map the one big complaint is the road network is very hard to see so you can see the main roads these kind of gray roads but any of the kind of paths and stuff that are along the fields and whatnot you really can't see that they're there so it's kind of difficult in that regard to tell where you have to go and whatnot but at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. It's not the end of the world. It's just a nuisance at worst. There we go. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Dust Money says, good to hear, Mr. John Brock. Dust Money also says, my best guess is for the reason your pastures have regrown so fast is because they are animal pastures. If you were to mow regular grass fields, it probably would regrow that fast. I would imagine that's the case. Um... That I I, I kind of leaned toward that towards that as well. Um, it's one of those. I think, like I said, I think I'm gonna try to just plow it out. Maybe in the background kind of thing. Maybe on one of these live streams, I'll just plow out one of the fields just to see, kind of thing. But with only sixteen thousand dollars, and don't get me wrong, this is gonna help these contracts here. Um, it's one of those where you know I'm gonna have to kind of play it. Uh, you know, play it safe for now. So it's this driveway here. And then looks like I'm going into this farm, but really you got to come around the side here. There's this lane. And then you just got to follow this kind of road. There we go. And this takes you on back to 83. Uh, and Dust Bunny says, is your farm the only one with horses? So no, there's several around here that has horses. Um, I'm not going to say all of them have horses, but a good chunk of them do. Um, 
but it's also part of the reason why I chose this farm is because uh, one, I didn't want just a standard farm that that you start out the map with. I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit, um, but at the same time, wanted to be able to. There we go. Wanted to be able to do horses this go around. Um, I've yet to do a let's play where I've had to deal with horses. So it's going to be nice to be able to, you know, integrate something new into the series and kind of go from there. So that's, that is the plan. But as I mentioned in the last episode as well, you know, we're going to be doing sheep and because there's such massive amounts of each uh, animal that can be accepted, I absolutely plan on being able to fill up these pens and pastures. I want to get them to like their maximum capacity. Um, it, well, if not their maximum capacity, it, really up there. Um, so that's why I loaded hundreds of thousands of liters of hay into the sheep barn uh, in anticipation to eventually get the sheep and getting to a volume of sheep that's going to just be chugging through that food. At least that's my guess. Because I'm not quite sure in how much food 800 sheep will go through. Probably quite a lot. That's my best guess. Let's see. And we need one more pallet. Uh, nope, there it is. Such a large list of pallets. go let's see dust bunny says uh remember when you mowed and tried to plow out replant the cow pasture on the valley old farm uh wouldn't allow you to do that um yes so that is 100 percent true also says i'm a horse fanatic i own several during my lifetime they are very special creatures yes absolutely um i've had family that's owned horses throughout the years and yeah, they, they're really uh, magnificent creatures. Uh, lots and lots of fun. And, you know, just each one of them, like, just like dogs, has their own personality, their own little, you know, quirks and foibles and all that stuff. And it's really fun to kind of get to know their personality and how they'll react to certain stimulus and stuff like that. It's just like any animal. It's, it's you know, a part of the... Uh, part of the adventure let's see if I remember right this one was all the way down at the end here and that's something that I do like about this uh, map as well is the fact that you can cut through the hedges but you can see all those little posts that are in between the hedges. Um, you can take out like the hedges, cutting those little tree stumps. Um, oops, uh, right here. There it is. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, but yeah, all, all those little stumps you can cut out and then you can take out that section of hedge so you can, oh, so that's what I was getting ready to say about this map too, is I would say that this is the most customizable map out there. And the reason for that is, is that all these hedges can be taken out. You can cut the trees down. You can literally do just about anything. All the buildings, every single one of them can be modified, can be, you know, taken out kind of thing. So it's just one of those where... This is a highly customizable map. All the farms, all the fields, all everything, everything can. And what's really, really cool is let's say you don't want to have a uh, pasture. You want like an open uh, concept, you know, free, a free uh, range, like chickens and, and sheep, whatever. Um, there are these little light posts all throughout the map that if you cut them down with a chainsaw, boom, it just takes out walls or it takes out like certain key features on the map. 
uh, which is <laughs> really, really cool. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to my farm real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So all throughout each one of these, so you'll see that's all lined with these uh, bushes and rocks and all that stuff. Where is this one? Oh, you know what? Maybe there's not one here because I can cut these hedges down using the chainsaw. So, let's see. Maybe around my chicken barn? Is there one around there? Yes. Here it is. So, if I wanted to remove this fence here, and make it to where my chickens are now free range chickens kind of thing there's no no pen or pasture in between them uh you just take a chainsaw and you cut this down and once you cut it down everything just disappears and now you have free range chickens so it's just one of those uh cool little features that, that i personally really appreciate um so it's just one of those i just like i said i really dig this map i really like it it's got all the things that i personally look for on a map um the sight lines the uh undulations there's it's not just flat but there are areas where it can be flat so it's easy to build up in some areas it's more difficult than others but it's just not flat and boring and really allows you to kind of you know like I said, just kind of take ownership of the map. There's no area that you can't buy on the map, so you can purchase every square inch, including places where there's uh, production sites and all that stuff. So it's just like I said, it's one of those that I really appreciate how this map was set up. I love how it's so customizable and made to... Oh, uh, oh it did finish. Am I done with the contract, though? That's the question. No, I am not. So I should be coming up on it soon. Let's see. 90. Oh, this is 83. I'm on this one. Let's see so this one's almost done oop there we go and oh almost we're getting there we're getting there now we're gonna fertilize a little in the neighbor's field that's all right Let's see, what do we got? 98. There we go. Perfect. Nope, stop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Almost $60,000 worth of fertilizing contracts. I'll take that. I will take that big time. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Uh, Dust Bunny says, I believe cutting the posts and the hedges in something uh, Alien Jim created and allowed other map make. Yes, um, I believe you're right. I I think that was the first time I've ever seen it was through Alien Jim. Um, ooh, we got another one. Let's take that. And, ooh, we got a plowing. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a plowing. And, ooh, silage. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, let's get the plowing going first. Which one is that one? 72. Where are you, 72? So, yeah, let me... So, this is basically what I have to do in order to figure out how to get from place to place. Because the roads are just really not well marked off. Um, oh, you know what? I wonder... Can I get back here through here, through here, and then back up this way, back up this road, and then this way? Um... I 
Where is 72? How do I how do I get to you? Okay. So there. Oh, you have to cut through this. So this is the main starting farm. And yeah, you see how you have to cut through some of these starting farms to or some of these farms to get to certain places? Like that is crazy to me. Yeah, I have to cut through there in order to get to it. Okay, well, it is what it is. Let's see. Uh, are the animal pens also included in the build menu? I do believe so, actually. Uh, animals, let's take a look at cows. Uh, okay, Maypole Farm, yes. So, cow barn large, 1,000. Cow barn with feeding row, about 1,000. So yeah, the, the cows are here. We've got, I don't think horses are, because I think the horses are pretty much standard across the board. Yeah. I don't think they put anything more than 16 on any map, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong about that. Uh, let's see, pigs. We've got, yep, Maypole Farms, a thousand pigs. Um, now that, that's going to be a big adventure right there. Anybody who does like a thousand pigs at a time, that's going to take a ton of food. Tons of food. Here's the sheep. Maypole Farms. Got a uh, thousand sheep here. Uh, chickens. Oh, right there. A thousand chickens. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, they are available for... Nope, that's not my weight. My weight's over here. Go, hook up to this, tuck this away, and now watch out, silly American coming through doesn't uh, doesn't always remember that uh, he's playing a map that's <laughs> that's left hand drive. <laughs> oh my goodness. I cannot tell you the number of times I'll just be driving around on the right side of the road and all of a sudden there's a car coming head on. It's like, oh, hey, I forgot. I'm in Ireland. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. This is my turn. Yeah, this is the driveway to the starting farm. And, it, and it's a really nice starting farm, too. Like, it took everything I had not to just say, okay, I'm going to go with the starting farm. Uh, yeah, you see how there's these uh, 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 stone walls right here? There's lamp posts that will cut down the stone walls. There's just all sorts of different stuff that uh, will work and interact with uh, those lamp posts. And you can just cut them down and make them your own. Um go from here is it this way yes okay so out to here and this field or this field the, the farmyards they get pretty tight I mean it is any typical European uh, style map seems to um you know, things are built right on top of each other. And every time I see a farm where, you know, there's hardly any room to move, I'm always incredibly impressed with, you know, the, the people who actually own and operate those farms. Because it's just one of those, like, who if I, if I worked there, I'd probably be crashing every two seconds kind of thing. Well, you know what? I need to turn this the opposite way. Okay, so we're gonna set that off, and now the fertilizing contract, what was that? That was on two? There's two, where are you? Oh, just down the road, nice. Nope, let's get the loot first. There we go, perfect. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Cole says, hello from Wisconsin. How's it going, Cole? Hope you're having a good day so far. And Santosh, hey, how's it going, Santosh? How are you doing? Love from Nepal. Hey, thanks for stopping by tonight. Hope you're having a great day so far. Or I think, uh, yeah, Nepal, I think, would technically be day. That's quite, uh, quite a few hours ahead of us here. That's certainly uh, living in the future territory. Let's see, I'm going to need another pallet. That's all right. I'm going to throw another pallet. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There we go. Almost full up on this pallet. You know what? That'll be plenty. Don't need to buy another whole pallet just to have most of it sit up here at the... Oh, there's a car! Look both ways. Sorry again, silly American coming through. <laughs> ah, goodness. I said this a lot in the last... Uh, map and I'll say it some more here if I drove in real life how I drove <laughs> how I drive in this game I would uh, I at minimum wouldn't have a license or maximum be in jail or prison oh, goodness 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 let's see this is is this two no this one this one to my left that's two where's the entrance to two where are you Again, uh, an old movie reference. Don't know why it just came. Uh, whoa, there's uh, there's a wall there. Don't know why it came into my brain, but what was it? Car 54, where are you? I don't even remember where I heard that movie line from. Oh, it, yeah, there it is. That's the entrance I'm looking for. And pow. One of those, I don't even think I actually seen the movie that I'm referencing. It's one of those, just the, the kind of tagline or the, the, from one of the screeners, maybe? Maybe that's what I'm remembering? I can't, who knows? Who knows? My mind can be a mystery from time to time that even I cannot even unlock. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to, yeah, we're going to do a headland and then I'll catch up with the checks. I see that uh, we've got several messages in there. Uh, I wish I could remember why I know that reference. I can't even think, like, can't even think of where I remember that from. It's got to be from, like, an old trailer or something, and I just, so... The, the, I'm gonna show my age. The, this is where this is where I'm gonna, you know, back in my day. You know, I used to used to have a TV growing up in my room and whatnot back when I was a teenager, and uh, VHSs were all the thing back in those days. You know, this is back before DVDs and and whatnot kind of got popular, and and I used to have movies that I would just fall, I would fall asleep to, with my TV on. I would set the sleep timer and, you know, just kick off, you know, in the middle of the night kind of thing. Well, I would be watching VHSs all night because we didn't have cable where I was, where I lived. I was out in the middle of nowhere, so cable wasn't an option. We could have had satellite, but it was just too expensive, not worth the price kind of thing. So one of those where... VHSs were my world for the longest time. Movies in general were just, that was all you had in order to, to put on the television kind of thing. If you weren't sitting there playing games, obviously. Like, and I used to have like the gaming systems and all that stuff uh, all throughout you know, growing up. Well, I mean, there would just be movies that I would be, I would go to sleep to 
over and over and over for like weeks, months at a time. You know, it'd be the same movie, just I would just fall asleep to it. It wasn't that I was sitting there watching it or listening to it, it was just something on in the background to kind of white noise kind of thing. That that was my white noise machine, you know, back in those days. Um, so that's why I'm kind of thinking that it's more than likely just a kind of trailer that was in front of the movie that I, that I would watch over and over again. That's my guess. Well, let me catch up with the chat and see what everyone's saying. So far, let's see. Dustmoney says, welcome in Cole and Santosh. Cole says, pretty happy. Got myself a 06 Arctic Cat. F7, what is that? Articat, is that a... It sounds like a snowmobile to me. Let's see. Cole says, I've been needing an upgrade. Dust Bunny says, oh my word, I don't think you were old enough to know about Car 54. Uh, that's also possible. That is also possible. Uh, it was an old sitcom. Car 54, where are you? is an American sitcom that aired on NBC from September 61 to 63. Wow. So, so yeah, it's got to be an old trailer. Uh, maybe a remake? Did they ever make a movie? I'm curious. Uh, filmed in black and white about two mismatched New York City police officers who patrol the fictional 53rd Precinct in the Bronx. Car 54 was their patrol car. Okay, okay. Yeah, see. Now now I'm just oh, that just that just deepened the mystery. Oh goodness. Uh it is a snowmobile. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I know things. I know <laughs> I know things. Oh goodness. No, that's awesome. Congratulations. Um Back back when I used to live in Michigan, snowmobiles were were all the thing. Especially uh, back when I was a, a really young kid, um, my family used to have a cabin uh, up in it was the Lower Peninsula, um, but it was far up into the northern part of it. It was a, in a town just outside of Atlanta, in Michigan, and. Yeah, the, the cabin didn't have a driveway, and it was like, I want to say maybe two or three miles off the main road. So you'd basically tow uh, all the things that you're going up to the cabin with, including the snowmobile, because oftentimes we'd go in the middle of winter, and the main road, you would just basically park and leave your car on the main road, and then uncouple the snowmobile and you would just portage you know all your stuff to uh to the cabin kind of thing like i said it was tucked a couple miles off the road it was off of a lake it was oh i have so many fond memories and i think the last time i was there i might have been like six seven years old but i can still vividly remember it uh to this day it's just absolutely gorgeous cabin um and, and the reason i remember it so much is you know back in the day i used to really really believe in santa claus like back when i was like five years old um and, and you know every winter time i used to get so pumped up for christmas just like every little kid does um let's see let's go ahead and collect on this contract booyah uh we've got oh well that's a that's a problem. Why did that happen? I didn't even notice that the uh, worker stopped. Well, that's a uh, that's something we're gonna have to babysit. Oh well. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. So we we had a snowmobile growing up, and we'd always have to to just portage everything back and forth oh no i'm sorry i i <laughs> uh, no I, I was moving on to a different story but I, I vividly remember this cabin because when i was five years old um maybe six my family had decided that okay we're going to go up to the cabin for christmas and it was the first time that we decided to do this 
uh, at least as far as I can remember. Um, but I remember so much just losing it, thinking, oh no, Santa's never going to find me. We're going to be out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, and just thinking like I wasn't going to get Christmas kind of thing. And, and my, my parents, bless their, bless their hearts, you know, they were just reassuring me, oh no, no, you know, no, bud, it's okay. Santa will find you. He's Santa. He knows exactly where you're at and he'll be here. You know, don't you worry you know, kind of thing, and I guess it was one of those, uh, they were really excited because I, not because I was so, like, worried and upset, like, they obviously weren't taking pleasure about, you know, their, their son going through that kind of anguish, but it was one of those that they knew, obviously, that, you know, Santa, quote-unquote, was going to show up, they knew that, so they saw, like, you know, just how heartbreaking it was. And then all of a sudden Christmas day comes and Santa, you know, obviously came and my parents, you know, they did the milk and cookies and all that stuff. It was, you know, great, you know, great, uh, you know, Christmases and stuff like that. And woke up that, that morning and saw the tree just absolutely stuffed just full of presents and all that stuff. I guess my dad, you know, years and years and years later told me that, you know, for that particular Christmas, it took him hours, you know, going back and forth on the snowmobile, uh, portaging all the gifts from the car uh, to the cabin. So it was just one of those that, you know, seeing my face just light up, you know, that morning and, and Santa came, Santa came, you know, that that's one of the you know one of the one of the oldest memories I can think off the top of my head, um, you know, was, was from that cabin specifically, and that one in particular. But it was also at the time, and again, I, I vividly remember this, you know, going around to all my you know family at the time, and you know, going, oh, I'm so and so, and I'm fine. I would always say my name in full, you know. <laughs> and tell the and, and name in full and my age and it was just one of those I, I don't know why I picked up on that but it was just something that I did for the longest longest time so I, I, I'm you know first middle and last name and I'm you know five years old <laughs> kind of thing Any, and even people who knew me for my whole life like I said I would say this to family it was just, I don't know why, it was just something I did. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Cole says, uh, pretty good deal as well. 15, oh, that's not bad for a snowmobile. Nice. So whereabouts are you, Cole, that you're uh, having to rip around on the snowmobile? Obviously, somewhere in the north, but uh, like I said, just just curious, what uh, way up in northern Wisconsin? That that would be an appropriate venue. <laughs> that would absolutely be an appropriate venue for a snowmobile. Yeah, I I tell you what, I absolutely miss because uh, we had that snowmobile for years and years and years. It was it was an old old snowmobile, but that thing was like a tank. You know, uh, come on. Are we gonna go? There we go. And let's see if we can actually uh, make our way through this without having to babysit him anymore. But yeah, I vividly remember just you know growing up with that same snowmobile year in year out, and uh, eventually I got uh, got old enough to where I was able to drive it you know by myself around the around the house during the winter time and. And whatnot, um, you know, it was obviously after we sold the cabin and and whatnot, because it was owned by you know the family kind of thing that cabin. So it was one of those, you know, my my dad's side. You know, whenever his uh, older brothers and sisters, you know, decided, you know, hey, we're gonna, we want the money rather than the memories, kind of thing. Well, kind of forced everyone to kind of you know give up on it and 
you know, sell it outright kind of thing. So unfortunately my father was outvoted at the time and, you know, we don't have access to that cabin anymore. So it is what it is, you know, it's, that's why, uh, you know, don't, don't go into owning anything with family because it, it very often doesn't work out very well. Uh, my dad says, well, that's one of the biggest things that he not regrets, but just wishes could have been different is, you know, still having access to that cabin and it not be, you know, kind of the family, you know, communal cabin kind of thing. Because once, uh, once, you know, the quote unquote majority of the, and really it was just the older, you know, brothers decided, you know, hey, we want out of this cabin. We want the money more than we want the, the memories. Then that's one of those that, you know, everybody else basically had to get on board with kind of thing. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be good to let this chug away. So now, where is the bait? Bailing uh, is 44. Where's 44? Ooh. Well, how do I get to you? Okay, well, it's over in this direction. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where is 44? There it is. Okay. So, okay, so there's a couple entrances. Down here. Okay, so we can get there right from the main road. So it's just... Okay, it's the next entrance past the main farm. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, close to the Michigan border. Okay, okay. So I probably... Uh, I've been in that area most likely because I used to, to go all the way up to like my Iron Mountain, Michigan, which is right next to the border of Wisconsin. Used to bob in and out of Wisconsin all the time. Uh being there in in around Iron Mountain. Actually, a couple of years ago, my wife and I uh, went to Iron Mountain. We, we rented a cabin. It was literally, you were looking at the river that separated uh, Michigan and Wisconsin uh, between Iron Mountain. And that was, oh, that was, that was a good vacation. Uh, was able to take her up to Lake of the Clouds, uh, Anybody's looking for like a, a good getaway spot uh, to be out in the middle of nowhere, go to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, go to Upper Wisconsin. Uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous up there. Um, but my wife and I, we ended up going to uh, places like Tequamanon Falls, which is on the uh, kind of eastern side of Michigan. Uh, they call it Tequamanon Falls the Root Beer River. And the reason that is is that the river itself runs through, uh, did I pass it? Nope, there it is. Um, the river, or the river itself runs through a big, uh, is it cedar or cypress? I think it's cedar. Cedar, yes, cedar. Um, big cedar forest. And what happens is that during certain times of the year, the cedar trees will actually turn the water a very, very muddy brown color, uh, hence Root Beer River. And yeah, it's just absolutely gorgeous spot to be. Um, took her up to a place called Lake of the Clouds, and that, talk about like postcards, it is just the absolute most gorgeous spot to be, in my opinion. Um, so Lake of the Clouds is in kind of the northwest portion of the Upper Peninsula, and in the Lake of the Clouds, you're actually in the Porcupine Mountains in the northern part of Michigan, and the lake itself is actually tucked in between a couple of pretty large... Oh, you know what? I should go the other direction so I can get some of this extra grass around here. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll go in the other direction first. See, I know things. Yeah, see, look at that. Even though I'm not in the field, I can kind of 
get just a little bit of extra product. And with a wind rower, a, even a decent sized wind rower, I should be able to pull it back into the field to where I'm going to get just a little bit of extra, again, a little bit of extra product. That's my hope at least. Now see, I sit here and talk a good game, but then somehow, some way, I go to pull the wind rower, or pull the swath back into the field, you know, with the wind rower, and something goes wrong. It won't work out the way I, <laughs> the way I thought. <laughs> That's often what happens with me. Oh goodness. But uh, but yeah, Lake of the Clouds. It's it's tucked in between you know the Porcupine Mountains, and you actually are on kind of a. a I don't want to say a mountain top. It's you know a pretty decent sized peak, but you uh, you climb up to the, the top of the ridge, and then you look down into the mountain or into the the valley, and it's just oh it is absolutely stunning and breathtaking. Like I said, if you ever get a chance, go check it out because just northern Michigan, northern Wisconsin in general is just absolutely gorgeous country up there. Um, what else did we do up there? I took her to, uh, ooh, this is a cool little place that uh, I'd always driven past but never been to until my wife and I went there. It was a place called Oswald's. And what Oswald's is, is a bear sanctuary, a black bear sanctuary. And we actually got to, you know, be within a few feet of black bear uh, because it's basically like a, a recovery uh, area. They, they're basically bears that are found in the wild that would not survive kind of thing if, uh, if it wasn't for this place. And they try to rescue and to rehabilitate first, but oftentimes it's bears, you know, either, uh, the, 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 like I said, are not going to survive in the wild. Um, but they ended up having cubs there when we were there, and we were able to actually get pictures with the cubs and, you know, touch them and whatnot. And, you know, not something I'd ever be able to say, you know, outside of this experience, but bear fur is actually very rough, very coarse in feel. Um, again, <laughs> not something I'd get to say on a, on a normal basis. And I don't think too many people would be able to say that. Um, you know, to, to know what the, the feel of bear fur, you know, is like. But yeah, that was, that was a real cool place. Um, but yeah, they got all sorts of, you know, nature walks and trails. Uh, my wife and I ended up going on a, um, on a really cool, uh, nature trail out to, um, what was it? Bond, Bond Falls, that was really cool. You've got to walk. It, it, it's quite a bit of a walk to go back there, but once you once you're back there, it is just breathtaking and stunning. Uh, just very kind of untouched nature, kind of thing. Very very cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's just very 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 gorgeous up in that area, and someplace that I, I very frequently go to whenever I get the chance. Let's see, I think this will be a good spot to turn the worker loose. There we go, perfect. Let's catch up with the chat. Oh, just one more. It says, uh, pretty sure the one I have now gets up to, or up in the 110s. Ooh! Pretty fast. You be careful. One of those. Uh, I have a cousin um, who actually got really badly hurt. Not on a snowmobile, but you know, um, it was actually quad. Her, her husband, and her father were all driving on quads down this uh, dirt road, and they were. Just, tearing along as fast as those things would carry them and you know she was the third person in the trail or in the in the yeah in the team kind of thing and 
they were all kicking up a lot of dust and whatnot, so she couldn't see where they were going. Well, the road turned. Um, and then all of a sudden, she goes smacking right head first into a tree. And, um, you know, unfortunately now she's like, uh, I don't know if she's like partially paralyzed. Like she, she's lost a lot of function of her arm and, and whatnot. And yeah, it is just a real, real bad situation. You know, thankfully she's alive and, you know, as well and all that. Um, you know, but it was, it was a pretty rough go for quite some time with her. Um, you know, because like I said, she 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 got really badly hurt. Um, so yeah, just just be careful. It's one of those. It's all, you know, especially with a with a snowmobile. You you're obviously going to be going out in the middle of nowhere, and lots of lots of stuff can uh, can leap out in front of you, kind of thing. So. Don't need to. Don't need to inter introduce yourself to a spruce the hard way. Let's see. So let's see. We got the plowing still going. Oh yeah, 56. Perfect. Oh yeah, they're still chugging along. Now we're now we're cooking with gas. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Cole says, most of the time I'll just rip around the open lake. Yes, that's a lot of fun. Um, oh, man, that I used to go, uh, again, being from Michigan, used to go ice fishing all the time and all that. Man, I miss that. I'm down in Florida now, and one of those, uh, you, you don't see much ice around here <laughs> for obvious reasons. You, you, you see more gators than anything else, and oof. One of those uh, really don't get the opportunity to go onto onto the water as much as I'd like to, but also uh, the big thing around here is going into the salt water and whatnot. And I'm not big on going into the ocean, just in general, kind of thing. I I have unfortunately a kind of a weak constitution when it comes to motion sickness, um, so. Being on a boat really doesn't work out well for me. I, I can go onto a lake, no problem. You know, there's very little rocking on a on a lake boat. But uh, yeah, you go out in the ocean, you're you're. Mm. Let's see. Uh, but I have come close to hitting some deer running in for yes, yes. That's that's terrifying. Um, Yeah, it, that's the that's a big thing up in the north. For for people who aren't aware, you know, who don't either live out in the middle of nowhere or, uh, you know, live up north, uh, deer are a big thing to avoid uh, when driving. So, especially during the winter time, like you don't often see them during the winter. You typically will see them, especially moving around in the in the fall, like early fall. Uh, and early and late ish spring is when they're very active and they'll be in, out in the middle of the road they'll you know come crossing through uh, but where I'm from in Michigan there you're driving on dirt roads all the time so you're you're seeing deer you know cross out in the middle of nowhere all the time and it's one of those where um, the trees line all the roads at least again where I'm from and where I used to frequent so you just be driving around and all of a sudden just boom out of nowhere you just get deer just come f running right out in front of you it's terrifying uh especially during the middle winter you might get the you know occasional deer that'll you know be wandering around in the middle of winter um but oftentimes with the snow and whatnot they tend to hunker down and uh not move around as much you know, only when they have to kind of thing. But they oftentimes will uh, bury themselves under uh, pine trees and stuff like that and kind of make a little, like, nook to conserve heat. But, uh, yeah, it is absolutely terrifying. Uh, you'd be driving out in the middle of nowhere. 
uh, one thing that happened to me, uh, I was driving around up in the Upper Peninsula there and had a elk run out in the middle of the road. Now that, that is next level stuff because you're talking about an animal that's as big as a car kind of thing. Um, they also got moose and stuff up there and whew, you're talking even scarier because it's one of those where you get, uh, you if you hit a moose, unless you're in like a tall truck SUV kind of thing, you may stand a chance. May. But if you're going at speed and you hit a moose, because they're so tall and lanky, their legs are very tall, um, if you have a car, what oftentimes happens, and you can see uh, like Mythbusters is a, a good example. There was an episode where... Um, a car had basically the myth was a car hit a moose and it completely cleaved off the entire roof of the car and they were going through all the the various myths and, and whatnot associated to it um but they were basically trying to show was it possible kind of thing and they ended up proving yes it's possible and they ended up taking like a uh I think it was a bunch of tires that weighed roughly the same as a, a moose and, you know, had stringy little legs and they just supported it kind of in the air kind of thing. Because what happens is when you hit the moose, it's so tall, you just take its legs out from under you, but its body mass is it's right at head level on a car. So what happens is you take out its legs and if you're going fast enough, you're just clipping its legs out from under it and then you're hitting everything on the moose um, you know, front and center kind of thing, right at head level in a car. So, yeah, it, it's very much, you know, very much a, a deadly situation um, kind of kind of thing. So, if you ever drive around northern Michigan in the middle of winter or just in general, be on the lookout. <laughs> don't, don't just be, you know, flying through the gears and you know not be paying attention pay as much attention as you possibly can i will tell you from personal experience that uh it is very much possible to hit hit deer hit you know elk moose whole nine yards and it's not fun it is scary as can be and they cause a lot of damage especially during um during like fall uh when deer and and whatnot are at their largest because that's when they're putting on all their bulk for winter. That's 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 especially the worst time because in the end they're constantly on the move because they're constantly trying to find more and more food sources. So, anyways, I'll get off of that topic because uh, yeah, this this isn't uh, you know Big Daddy Dave's nature show. This is uh, <laughs> Big Daddy Dave Gaming. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, and things are little tanks. Yes. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, I, and again, a deer deer is no different. They're just a smaller version of what I've been saying with moose and elk. You know, they, they got such spindly legs that if you are lower than they are and you just take their legs out from under them, you know, and most deer are not bigger than the average car. But again, what tends to happen is that when you hit a deer, if they're standing, like, at ground level, um, you just clip their legs out from under them, and then they end up rolling up on top of the car kind of thing. So it, unless you're in a taller vehicle where you just kind of, you know, hit them kind of thing, it, it ends up being a lot of damage, especially in small cars. I have a cousin who hit a deer in a... a was it his Nova? It was an old, old like '80s, old, old '80s car. Might have been no, it might have been his Escort. He had a, I think, it might have been his Ford Escort. And yeah, it just completely demolished the entire, not only the front end where, like the the bottom half of the deer hit, but it also destroyed the the glass and and the upper pillar, like the the pillar that spans between. Um, the roof. That's the word I'm looking for. Words are hard. Um, nope, 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 nope. Let's fold all this stuff away. There we go. 
So yeah, it, it's now being down here in Florida, it's funny. Um, but when you see deer and you know wildlife that would be considered similar down here as you would up in the north, they are just absolute miniatures compared to the animals up in the north. And I used to tell my wife this for years. And when we were first dating, we ended up coming to Michigan um, for a wedding for one of my one of my really good friends from back in high school. And, you know, I kept telling her, it's like, you know, be on the lookout because, you know, animals are way different up here than they are down there. And she didn't, not that she didn't believe me, but she just didn't understand um, and, and what I told her is like, look, you're going to see things like squirrels up in the north that are just like small dogs. Like you'll, you'll mistake them for what looked like a rat kind of thing. They're, they're massive. They're absolutely huge compared to the squirrels you see down here. And, and it makes sense. You know, animals don't have to be as large down here as they do up in the north because they have to deal with winter. So they have to put on so much bulk before they can you know go into like the winter months so they can survive kind of thing and I'm, I'm sitting there explaining it to her it's like you know you see a deer up here versus or a deer up there versus a deer you know in in florida it's like it's like you're looking at a baby like you're not looking at the same species almost kind of thing it's just oh yeah yeah no i get it you're, you're you keep telling me this it's like no I, I don't think you you truly appreciate what it is i'm telling you and the first time we ended up uh going to where the wedding venue was going to be it was the church where my buddy uh and his wife got married uh we saw a squirrel out in the parking lot and i pointed it out it's like oh hey there's a squirrel right there and she's like holy smokes that's not a squirrel that's a dog like the, it was compared to what she's used to seeing because she lived in Florida ever since she was six years old. You know, she grew up with squirrels that, you know, would fit in the palm of your hand kind of thing. But a squirrel up in the north, they're, they're, they're massive in comparison. And it's when she kind of finally, like, took notice. And then we saw a deer uh, out in a field. You know, it was it maybe about a hundred feet away from from the road, um, and this was. It would have been really early spring, so they just they hadn't dropped their, you know, their winter weight just yet, um, so they were still really, you know, poofy, and. I ended up was like, oh hey, there's a deer right there, and she's like holy sm again is that kind of same kind of visceral reaction of whoa that's like insanely massive compared to what she's used to seeing down here and i told her it's like yeah it's it's one of those like if i were to to clobber a deer down here i i would be sad for the animal and whatnot and you know but it's not going to be like right off the vehicle kind of thing you know and th which is very often what happens, you know, in a crash up north is that if you hit a deer up north, especially during the wrong time of the year, you're pretty much going to have to write off your car. You know, de depending on the car, obviously. And also depending on the value of it. So one of those, uh, yeah, like I said, I've had uh, my cousin write off a couple of cars uh, because of, you know, hitting deer. So... Just, just one of those. Uh, oof, just gotta be, just gotta be careful. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Dust Bunny says, uh, but that's when you. Uh, whoops. But that's what makes this place great. Place to hang out and chat. We can chat about anything and everything, not just gaming. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's only few exceptions. Um, to that like i said it's very very few exceptions but we'll cross those bridges once we kind of get to them kind of thing and, and you know obviously it's one of those just within reason 
kind of thing. I don't want to start talking about, you know, all sorts of, you know, crazy far out kind of gobbledygook and, you know, certainly don't want to get into like politics. Like that's, that's something that, uh, was, is not something I'm interested in talking about on this channel, uh, kind of thing. Um, just, just one of those that want to be able to just sit back and have fun with, with anybody who shows up kind of thing. And I think, uh, I think politics has kind of pretty much broached into every aspect of life here lately. So one of those just be good just to kind of not have to worry about it. So... Yeah, look at that. Now we're able to pull everything into the field. And perfect. So yeah, we were able to gain all that additional grass from that outer periphery. And with this windrow, we're able to pull it back in and utilize what we shouldn't have access to, but do because, you know, the equipment that we're given. So I am happy about that. Yep, absolutely, one hundred percent with you there, Dust Bunny. Those are those are the two things. And, and here's the thing: is I don't have any issues with either one of those personally. Like, it, it's one of those. It's one of those that, if if you think a certain way or you believe in certain things, hey, that's great. You know, very, very happy for you, but one of those that this is a place to bring people together and to have fun, not to, you know, drive wedges in between people. So one, like I said, it's one of those that I just don't want to have anything to do with, with that kind of subject matter being on the channel kind of thing so there'll be times where i'll sit there and and potentially bring up certain topics you know that is not a, a means of talking or segueing into politics but you know i've said many times there are, there are things going on in the world that just make the world a crazy place nowadays why what You know, but not looking to take some, you know, huge stand on, on things in one direction or another or to get into to deep conversations about them or, or anything like that. It's, you know, just, I don't know. I'm kind of humming and hawing and, and, and but it's, it's certainly one of those that we'll know it when we see it. I'm, I'm not going to sit there and start, you know, giving examples or whatnot because it's just one of those that, you know, We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's see. Tighten up this windrow and then we'll set the worker off. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, let's see. Dust Bunny says... Uh, People don't seem to be able to discuss either of those topics. They always end up arguing. Well, it's oftentimes I find that those subjects can't be talked about because when you talk about them from any aspect, it's as if you are questioning the, the very fiber of that person's being kind of thing. And people oftentimes can't disassociate themselves from the topic that's being discussed. So it's, yeah, it's certainly one of those that it's just better off not to, not to bring it up and not to, you know, and like I said, it's just a place where this is a place where I just want to be able to come on, have a good time, build a great uh, rapport with everybody who wants to come on here and, you know, just have a love for has, uh, starting with a love for farming simulator 
right there and gaming in general kind of thing it starts there but want to be able to just bring anybody and everybody we can in and just build a space where we can get along regardless of what may make us different i want to focus on what makes us the same kind of thing what can what can span continents what can span just anything you know and this is where we start is for a love of farming simulator a love of gaming and then we can move on from there honestly i think that's a lot of a lot of problems would be solved if we stopped focusing on what made us different from each other and focus more on what we have in common. You know, whether whether you know the separation that drives us apart is is religion or is politics, you know, if we were to sit there and focus on the things that can actually we can find common ground on then a lot of those other things you know yeah they're big things they're they're very important things but if we start from a sense of, of what we have in common then we can start to find things that you know we can bridge the differences we can we can you know I don't know kind of humanize people first by finding our commonality and then fold people together kind of thing i don't know anyways let's uh let's see don't worry didn't plan on talking about either subjects and then what other games does everyone play um actually here lately um in kind of my downtime when I get it, uh, I jumped back on uh, SnowRunner here recently. Um, don't know what caused me to, to pop it in and to, you know, give it a try again, but it was one of those that I started playing it for a little while, and there was certain mechanics about that game that really kind of drive me nuts. Um... But overall, it's a really fun game. And once you kind of realize how the overall game kind of works, it's actually a lot of fun. But it's also incredibly frustrating. <laughs> Especially when you make a silly mistake. Those, those That's when I, I really get frustrated with that game. Is I'll, I'll get stuck somewhere and it's like, I should have never have gone in that area in the first place. I knew I shouldn't have gone in that area. I had the worst feeling about even driving an inch into that area, but I drove into it anyways, and now I'm stuck. I have no way of getting my vehicle out without going clear across the map, getting another vehicle, and just going from there. And it's, oh, it's, like I said, it's a fun game, but it's also incredibly frustrating. Uh, let's see. I sometimes will hop on Red Dead. Oh, Red Dead's such a good game. Oh, I love Red Dead Redemption. Uh, 1 and 2 were both really, really good. But Red Dead Redemption, the, the original, when that first came out, oh, man, was that so good. And the, uh, what was it, the Dead Eye feature? I loved that. That was, like, the first time I can recall. No. No, the reason I loved it so much is it actually reminded me of, uh, was it Max Payne? It had a similar feature where uh, time basically slowed down and you're able to multi-target kind of thing. Um, but I think that Red Dead like better utilized that, uh, that feature rather than Max Payne kind of... I don't want to say that it just kind of threw it in there, but it just was one of those that really kind of, if I remember right, just didn't really kind of add up to me. 
Um, Madden 24, that's a good game. I know Jody is a fan of uh, a Madden. Uh, and uh, SnowRunner is pretty nice, yes. Yeah, Snow, uh, like I said, I was playing it for a while there and then just kind of stopped. And actually, I think it was, I think it was when I kind of discovered um, FS19 is when I kind of stopped playing SnowRunner and really kind of got into this. And actually, I'll actually credit the reason I got into Farming Simulator at all was uh, Markiplier. Funny enough, was actually Markiplier who got me into playing Farming Simulator. I want to see if I can pull this in. Um, so Markiplier ended up playing Farming Simulator 19 with a couple of his buddies. Um, yeah, no, I didn't think I was going to be able to. That's pretty fun. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, 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 no. All right, we're not even going to try because I'm going to mess up that... Uh, mess up that swath right there at the edge and then I'll pull it out and ugh, just won't won't be pretty uh, but no Markiplier ended up playing um, playing FS19 online with uh, a couple of his friends I think Wade and Bob are their names and it was the first time I've ever seen Farming Simulator um was when he when he played it and it was just one of those like huh you know it, it's kind of had my attention and, and i'll be honest it was kind of the the kind of silliness and goofiness that they were putting into it that really kind of got me kind of started being interested in it and then it's like you know what i want to try it and i ended up buying it and you know and i ended up loving it just absolutely loving this game uh, back in FS19 and made me kind of wish that made me wish that I actually had gotten into the series a bit sooner than I than I did you know because as far as I'm aware FS or farming simulator has been around since what was it 2013 maybe maybe earlier renditions I'm not I'm not 100% certain about that um But yeah, no, it's just one of those that, uh, yeah, that was kind of the, the start of my journey into, into this game was just seeing it. Like, I had no idea that it was like this whole big community of, you know, content creators like Mr. Seeley P, DJ Goham, um, and, and everybody else that's involved. I had no clue. You know, it was, it was, you know, just a random video that I just so happened to see from, from Markiplier that, started me on the journey kind of thing and hey i'm grateful because here i am you know several years later where i'm now a content creator and am playing this game and creating community with everyone here with with everyone that interacts with the videos and, and the content and just oh just it, it's I never would have thought that several years ago, watching that video, I'd be here today. And it's funny how life kind of takes you. You know, you never, thinking back, think of, oh, hey, you know, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to, you know, you, you never think about what it is that you're going, I mean, you, you do. You obviously plan for the future kind of thing. But there's times when life kind of throws you a curve and you, you kind of do something with it. And, that yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, and kind of thinking back, you know, I never thought about it until just now of, you know, this is, this is where it started for me. Let's see. Can I... You know what? Let's try and pick this up. I don't think I will be able to pick it up. Yeah, I didn't think so. Didn't think so. Uh, here, let's... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Automatic drop. There we go. 
I don't think I've ever used the Govial uh, Baylor. Oh. This isn't one where you can. Yeah, I have to stop. It's not the multi chamber bail. It just dawned on me. I have to pick up all of these with uh, with those uh, 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 forks. And where is this going? Bales Market. Where's the Bales Market? I don't even know where all these places are yet. Let's see. Where are you, Bale Market? Oh, uh, silage was up here. Bales Market. Uh, tag place. Oh, well, I guess I didn't have to do that, did I? Uh, okay, so... Oh, that's the, the animal dealer down the street from my farm. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. That's when he says... I never played Red Dead, but I've watched some of my friends play it. Oh, Dust Bunny, such a good game. If that's the kind of game that you're into, like the the well, I technically is a third person shooter. I don't think you actually go into first person. Um, yeah, such a good game, such a good game. Uh, I like the horseback riding in it, but I don't like the having to shoot and kill people part of it. Uh, I wish you were able to do missions without all the killing. Yeah, it's one of those... Uh, it's what Rockstar, I believe, makes uh, Red Dead Redemption. Um, so it's it's one of those that, you know, Rockstar being, you know, Grand Theft Auto and, and all that stuff, it's kind of part and parcel with, you know, the company. You know, Mayhem, Death, and Destruction is, you know, Rockstar's bread and butter. That's actually the only two games I can think of that Rockstar makes is uh, not two games, but two kind of. Oops. Is uh, Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto. Which I heard that there's going to be a new Grand Theft Auto here soon. Uh, what is it, GTA 6? Maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, John Brock says, uh, I think it's 2009, wow. Yeah, see, I mean, this game has existed for so long, and I had no idea about it. Like, no clue for the longest time. It is just, it's fascinating to think about how something could exist for so long, and you just be completely oblivious to it. I mean, it's not unusual. I mean, you're not going to know of every little thing out there, you know, that exists and, you know, for forever kind of thing. Like, it's, there's always going to be things that you're just not aware of. But it's, a, it's just a funny kind of, you know, funny kind of thing how something that's now such a pivotal part of, of my life, you know, this, this game and, and, you know, what's sparked the YouTube channel and all that. Um, that existed for so long that I, I had no clue even was out there. So one of those, like like I said, just just funny. Oh, come on, little tractor, you got this. Oops. Let's see. Go ahead and rehydrate real quick. Uh, much better. Yeah, some uh, some other games I used to be really big into. Like I said, I used to love the NHL series. You know, being a big hockey fan, being from Michigan, obviously a Detroit Red Wings fan. Um, I used to absolutely love the NHL series. Um, but, I mean, it's one of those where... Oops. Should have uh, 
come to a stop. I shouldn't have just blew right through that. Yeah, that's all right, though. But it was one of those where, and, and even Madden did the same thing, where politics just invaded it, you know, and just kind of drove me away from really playing it for especially the NHL series um, just I don't know just one of those where it just kind of became less about the gameplay and more about the the politicking and the and the you know the signaling kind of thing just drove me drove me nuts oops ah darn it See, this is why I don't like these round balers. It's because you always have to pay attention to, you know, the, the chamber filling up and, and doing all that. It just can be a real nightmare. Wow. This, this field... I might just go and lease a trailer, like an auto load trailer or something, just so I don't have to. There we go. As you figure we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bales so far. And we can only carry four at a time with the forks that they supplied. So, oof, I don't know. Yeah, it might just be better just to get a trailer and just sweep it through. Oh, well, I could have looked up at the counter, couldn't I? <sighs> Work smarter, not harder. That's my that's my father right there. Dave works smarter, works smarter, not harder. Use that head above your shoulders for more than just a hat rack. <laughs> Something else my father would say. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Always love thinking back at all the, the kind of goofy sayings that he has and whatnot and one of those things I can't wait to be able to start saying those things and them actually meaning something to my daughter. <laughs> One of those things that you get to look forward to when you're when you're a parent is the wisdom that you eventually get to impart onto the child and and whatnot and that's something I that I that I really look forward to and you know, and I get to see her, you know, do this kind of stuff every single day. Get to see her grow and, you know, kind of learn things. Like, perfect example. Um, I was playing uh, at the park with my daughter earlier today. And this particular park is right off of the ocean. And so it's got a really strong sea breeze kind of thing. And we were going around to this one side of the playground where it's got this it's not a ladder per se but it's kind of these little stepping rails so okay think of think of these little tiles that surround a pole the pole goes straight up and down but the tiles are off-centered so that you can kind of use them as, you know, quote-unquote stairs, but not really stairs. You kind of have to, like, use them to kind of climb on as, like, a ladder. Well, my daughter is not even two years old. She'll be two in February. And it's one of those that she ran right over to it, and she started climbing up on top of it, which she's starting to climb on just about everything, you know, as most two-year-olds will do. You know, she climbs on the back of the couch. She climbs on, you know, chairs. And, you know, we've got a couple of uh, of bar height, you know, chairs for our table. You know, so they're, they're really tall. Uh, there we go. The real tall 
chairs and ah darn it and she started climbing up on those like she's actually gotten up on them before by herself and there was one time where she actually climbed up on the table again which is bar height table by herself so it's one of those you know we've got a we actually started turning the table or the chairs down because she uses the chairs to climb up on top of the chair pad and then the chair pad to the table so we actually started uh, t lowering them on their sides so that she can't use them to climb up on. But uh, so anyways, we were at the park and she starts climbing up on this kind of ladder thing. Whoa. <laughs> Keep ignoring the counter. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, we're... Definitely, definitely going to be getting a trailer. We can lease out something, do an auto load situation because this, oof. I mean, we're going to be making a good amount of money on these bales. When everything's said and done, it's, it's going to be worth it. And it's going to save so much time rather than having to worry about, you know, four bales at a time. We're already up to 21 bales, so that's what? That's five separate trips. And it's not like we're going far. We're, oh, well, yeah, that'd be that'd be a nuisance. That would just be a pain. Let's see. Let's catch up with the chat here. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, Dust Bunny says. The Blue Farmer and I played Minecraft for over a year and built a city with over 200 buildings in it, and it even had its own housing subdivisions. Holy smokes, that's that's one heck of a creation right there. Nice. Then said, uh, I started playing FS19. I've been hooked on FS ever since. Same here. Same here. I mean, honestly, when I started playing Farming Simulator, I kind of just stopped playing everything else. Because it's one of those kind of games where, as I'm kind of getting older, I'm less interested in the kind of competitive, like, playing the sports games, playing the, the shooter games. A perfect example, I was playing um, not too terribly long ago. I had family come in from out of town. I was playing that um, Left 4 Dead game. It's that kind of zombie first-person shooter game. And it's one of those that I actually started feeling, like, really anxious and, like, really amped up and just kind of, uh, I guess the best word I can use to describe it was fluttery. Like, I just, I just felt, like, all sorts of just weird. I've never felt that. And I've played first-person shooter games my whole life. It's one of those that... I don't know. It just—I never had that kind of visceral feeling from playing a game like that before. But I just felt so amped up and so weird that it was just one of those like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't desire playing this style of game anymore, kind of thing. And that's when I started to kind of more value the the aspect of this game where you can just kind of come on and and do but while you're doing it you're kind of also able to relax and stay calm it's more about just the the repetitive nature of the projects that you're doing and i mean there are some stressful aspects about the game you have to be able to you know, work around the weather and you know hopefully not have a, a stint of weather so long that you can't harvest that's the one thing, oh my goodness, that's the one thing I honestly miss about the old seasons version uh, from FS19, the one that was a kind of mod developed by uh, an actual modder, not by giants. Uh, it was far more intuitive, or not intuitive, but far more uh, in-depth, the seasons, than this version is, to where... 
the Seasons version in FS19. Darn it. Um, to do, like, grass care. To make hay, you couldn't just use your tether. You would use your tether to get it to, like, stage one of drying. But then you had to let it sit out in the sun. <sighs> I'm going to remember that I have a capacity. One of these days. Might not be for this contract, but I will remember. <laughs> um, but you'd have to let it sit out and dry in the sun for, like, a day. Or, or like, however long in game it was like maybe half a day or half a month in game kind of thing for it to finally turn it into actual hay and then once it was hay then you could you know pick it up from there kind of thing and there wasn't the whole productions system to where you could just produce hay you had to go through the whole uh tedding and and, and drying process um, but also, if it rained, then it would actually turn the hay back into grass. It would also uh, decompose. So if you left down the field for too long, it would start to, like, the yield would start to disintegrate kind of thing. So there was just so many extra layers, and it was just so much more dynamic than what Giants has done with this version of Seasons. And don't get me wrong, this version of Seasons is fine. I mean, it's one of those that I know there was a lot of people out there who would, you know, say, oh, well, you know, the Seasons is, is great and I would really like it, but it's one of those that there's so much that's added to it that it's overwhelming. You know, there's a lot of people who just want to come on and play to have fun, not necessarily to come on have, you know, and have the full-blown simulator kind of vibe that you can have with this game. You know, they just want to come on and, and complete the task and move on to the next task kind of thing. So I can see why Giants kind of toned it down, but I would love to see there to be a version uh, available to kind of do those things that were available kind of thing. And, and that's just me. I mean, I, I could be the only one for all I know. Oops. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up. Uh, Cole says, I think I'm going to head out and do a little sprucing up uh, my new shed, getting it all shiny and ready. See you later, maybe. Hey, Cole, thank you so much for stopping by tonight. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you have yourself a good one. Uh, have fun sprucing up your shed. And have fun on that new snowmobile of yours. That's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, Dust Money says, have a good evening, Cole. Have fun, be, uh, but be careful when you're riding your Arctic Cat, 100%. Uh, oh, can't yet, no snow. Okay, well, <laughs> let's see. John says, uh, I played FS15, 17, 19, 22 on console, and FS14, 16 on iPad. Oh, wow, so you were, you were like, you were in it from like really early on. See, Dust Bunny says, wow, John, uh, you've been playing FS for a long time. Yeah, that's a long time. Uh, and Dust Bunny says, my son taught me how to play FS19, and he says that the precision farming in FS22 is lousy compared to F Yes. So precision farming, there's a lot of aspects that are the same, but there's a lot of different things that you could do in FS19 that... Um, they didn't carry over to 22 which again is fine it's one of those you know it is what it is but because they're made by giants um i understand why they would kind of reel it back a little bit and make them more approachable because i think that was kind of the biggest i don't want to say turn off about you know the seasons and the precision farming but there was a lot of things that are going on in both of those mods where they seemed very unapproachable to somebody who's very early on in the game and especially to somebody who's just looking to come on and, and you know play 
not really looking to to understand the full dynamics of what they're doing or really interested in farming per se they're just wanting to come onto the game and just play the game kind of thing um but yeah, the precision farming and and seasons were very unapproachable for for new people, and even precision farming now is to a certain extent very unapproachable because you know a lot of people don't realize that you can go into the pause menu to find uh, the more in depth kind of stuff for the explanations, and whatnot, and a lot of people don't think of you know hey maybe I should go and onto YouTube and look up a tutorial. To see how to play. I mean, a lot of people, it's not that they don't know, it's that either they don't think of it or they don't want to put in the effort for a game that they're just looking to, to kind of tool around on and to mess around with. Uh, let's see, that's 19. I'm not buying it, I'm gonna lease. Let's see, that's 18 bales. That, I think, is going to be the winner right there. Yep. Lease. 330 bucks. Perfect. So we're going to maximize our trips. It's going to be, like what, two trips instead of the six, seven, let's see, eight, 16, 24, 30. Uh, so, yeah, it would have been about eight trips back and forth. So I'm just, I'm looking to sell all these. I'm not looking to keep any of them. I've got plenty of silage there at the farm as of this moment in time. And I'm going to need more. I mean, with all the animals that we have access to on all these pens and pastures, you, you're going to need a good amount of product to, to keep them fully functional and operational kind of thing. But right now, I need cash. I need money. You know, 8300 is nice considering that we've only done you know what four five contracts up until this point speaking of which uh do 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 oh it is complete cool uh i'm gonna pull over just a second because i see that there's more chat going on i just want to catch up really fast make sure i'm not missing out on anybody there we go all right, uh, let's see. Just when he says, uh, oh, no, let's read that. John says, uh, good night, y'all. Uh, I'm going to bed. Hey, John, thanks for coming out tonight. I greatly appreciate you stopping by. Hope you have a good night, and we'll hopefully see you again uh, next time we do a stream. Uh, just when he says, good night, Mr. John Brock. Sleep well, sir. Absolutely, I second that. Sleep well. Let's see. So we're going to head over to this field here. Let's see what kind of let's see this holds 18 bales put an operating position wow it's 11:30 already holy smokes where does the time go So, aesthetically, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Eight? I'm confused. Didn't I see 18? Eighteen bales. Maybe I made bigger bales? What size bales did I make? I thought I made the... 3,500. I think that's the 125s. F. Eh, not a big deal. It is what it is. I mean, we're doubling our capacity per trip. So we're making, what, eight trips into four? And it's a lot easier to pick these up with the auto load trailer than it is those forks. Those forks, I mean... I mean, they're not the worst thing in the world, but it's just for 300 bucks, I'll pay 300 bucks to, to at this point, double our capacity and, and make it easier to pick them up off the field rather than, you know, trying to sit there and fight with it. Uh, do, 
do, do, do. Let me see. Okay. I think. Oh, oh, oh. There's a, there's a, there's a thing. Oh, and there's cars. I'm sorry. I'm in the way. There we go. There's a wall there. There's a silly driver. Wait a minute. Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, I did too. All right, well, let's pull in here and turn around. Hi, yi yi. This is the the bad thing about going to a new map is having to relearn all the layout, where all the buttons are, all the triggers, and... I, you know what? I shouldn't say it's a bad thing. It's just part of the growing process kind of thing. You, you gotta, gotta relearn everything. You gotta remember all the points of interest and whatnot. It just... I can't tell you the number of times where... I'll be driving where I think I'm going the right direction, especially like in Hills of Tuscany very early on. And pretty much any Let's Play I've done, um, I'll start driving somewhere thinking, oh yeah, that's the right direction. I know exactly where I'm going. Nope. <laughs> nope. You know, I, I've done that so many times. And that's when I'm like fully paying attention, not uh, not distracted, you know, reading comments or, or things like that. Just just one of those where <laughs> it just it just happens just happens all right wow eight bales put me at 68 percent so more than halfway done in one trip so there's i'm not in america I'm in ireland Driving left. <laughs> That's honestly the hardest part about me personally playing on a map that's not a drive on the right side kind of map. Is just remembering I need to drive on the left. And it's one of those that I really, really hope that with all the driving on the left side of the road that I don't for some reason like mimic that in real life because <laughs> that would be bad that would be real bad oof so it's not as far as I thought it was Let's see okay I do have an operating position Said we got a lot accomplished here tonight. We went from what 16 grand, I think, is where we started. Now we're at 83. That's not including what we're going to get off of this field and what we're going to get off of uh, the contract itself. That's that's not bad. I can uh, I can sleep at night with this. Okay, well, there's another trailer load. Really makes me wish that uh, that wasn't mislabeled in the capacities and said 18 bales instead of 8. I don't know why, I just never noticed that before. I've used this trailer before. Huh. It's funny, I've actually, in previous Let's Plays, I've actually used this trailer, um, I think in my Lands of La Mancha series, but I did it all manually. Um, and <laughs> you can actually get this stacked really tall with uh, with bales, if, if you take your time. You can get a pretty good pyramid going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. 
So you know what, Dust Bunny, it just dawned on me. You said that your son uh, introduced you uh, to, to this game. Um, by chance, has he ever... Uh, has he ever actually like been on the channel or, or uh, been on stream and I just haven't realized it? I don't know why it took me this long to just kind of sink in that you said that your son introduced you. Oops. I'm trying to... Yeah, that is... Okay, yeah, I did read that right. It doesn't participate in live stream. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Perfect. Ooh, four grand right off the bat after finishing the contract, and we still got plenty more. No, I was just... I was just curious if... It just... There was the longest time there where... Uh, I guess Hill, Billy Farmer was was hanging out in the background, and I had no idea that you two were were sisters. And all of a sudden, you know that it's like, hey, you know, there's there's uh, a whole family of people that are that are participating. I didn't know if we had uh, had one more in our midst that uh, I just wasn't aware of. Oh, you know what? That also reminds me, uh, Dust Bunny. How's uh, how's the building going? I know you. The last time we spoke, you said that the permits were approved. Um, were you able to to find every everything that you needed in order to make the steps going forward, or how's all that going so far? Let's see how many more. Bales we got going over there. Yeah, we still at least got two, maybe three more trips. Let's see. Oof, yeah. Yeah, we got a we got a few. We got oops. We got a few. Uh let's see. Uh Hillbilly Farmer says my nephew's wife also plays on PS4. Whew, yeah, see, we got a whole family affair going. Uh, contractor and Palmer come in December 1st to take a look and see what they can get started. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see, December 1st. So, yeah, I mean, got a couple more weeks, but that's awesome. Hopefully they'll be able to, you know, get working on it as soon as possible, and hopefully uh, before too much longer you'll be in your... Your little, uh, your little sweet there. And out of curiosity, uh, and, and you might not even know this, but how is like all the the building going on there in in Arkansas? Are they having uh, any issues going on? I know, uh, in my neck of the woods, they're having all sorts of issues, like with. Uh, kind of the supplies but it's because it's not the supply chain issues as far as i'm aware uh like it used to be it's the more that there's a ton of building going on down here so they're just having a hard time keeping up with the demand but i'm not sure with how arkansas and their their kind of growth is going so just wondering if that's uh something that's going to be any potential issue. The mom cave, that's right. Okay, I remember now. Uh, they're hoping weather permitting this. Oh, that's awesome. And out of curiosity, are you in like, uh, like North Arkansas, South, East, West? Like, just, just curious because, uh, I, I know that there's parts of Arkansas that can get, you know, like snow and and whatnot, but not sure with how heavy it is. I know, like, where I was in Michigan, it was, you know, snow was an inevitability, and you're dealing with it for several months of the year kind of thing, but... Let's see. Let's uh, drop that there.
Let's see. Uh, Hillbilly the Farmer says, just couldn't leave her out. No, of course not. Uh, didn't mean to leave her out, but I appreciate you mentioning her. Uh, Central Arkansas, about 40 minutes west of Little Rock. Okay, okay. So I, I got a, a rough estimate about where that's at. It's actually, uh, it's funny. Uh, my wife and I, I had mentioned this a few times on, on the channel, uh, we're, we're talking about moving uh, here before too much longer. And we're, we're basically looking anywhere from, from we'd lo love to stay here in Florida. We'd absolutely love to stay here in Florida. Um, but we're not sure if we're going to be able to afford anything that we need. Um, but we were actually looking and found lots of houses in Arkansas that are gorgeous, gorgeous houses and were very inexpensive. I was actually really shocked with how inexpensive uh, some of the houses were for, for what you're getting. So that uh, certainly became a contender. Um, You know, like I've mentioned, I'm I'm a father, so I'm I'm looking for, you know, all the, um, all the things for for, like the best place to raise my daughter and and whatnot. So, you know, schools are obviously important. I mean, I mean, there's the whole issue with public schools that are going on right now, and and you never know what you're gonna come across. But, um, based on what I've seen up until this point I've actually read that uh, oops uh, why is it not picking up all of a sudden I, I, but I was reading that uh, based on you know specific metrics that Florida has uh, like the number one school system right now with all things considered and then Arkansas I saw was number four on that list So schools are definitely, uh, obviously, a very important factor. Ooh, this is the last bail. Nice. So yeah, Arkansas is on the list. Um, Florida, obviously, Georgia, the Carolinas. Um, we don't want to move too far away because we got you know a bunch of family uh, down here. So it's one of those we don't want to like move back up to Michigan and whatnot and be you know halfway across the country because my wife she wants to be able to you know come and see her family and, and whatnot and we've we got two little nieces here so we want to be able to see them and whatnot and not not move too far but I think that Arkansas isn't that terribly far especially considering you know a flight is maybe like an hour hour and a half away from you know, where we are here. Let's see. So this is going to put us over $100,000, considering we started at six, a little over 16000 you know, at the beginning of this stream. I'm pretty happy about that. And we haven't even collected on the contract just yet. So... It's, uh, yeah, working out very, very nicely. I'm very, very pleased. Oh, and you know what? We haven't even collected the contract from uh, the plowing. So that's, that's even more money in my pocket. So sweet. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. There we go. Beauty. Uh, bu -bu 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 where, where? Nope, nope, nope. Contracts are this way. Uh, pow, pow. There we go. All right. Excellent. $113,000. That 
awesome. Let me catch up with the chat and see what everyone's saying so far. Uh, Dust Bunny says, uh, cost of living here is really good. Yes, that's, uh, actually, I need to, what I need to do is kind of figure out the whole, like, how taxes work in that state. Because here in Florida, there's no state income tax or anything like that. So that's one thing, because my father lives with us. And that's something that's really important for him is because he's retired and, and all that stuff. He doesn't want to necessarily have to pay a whole bunch in taxes from his pensions and, and whatnot, the, the income that he does receive. Um, so that's that's all stuff we got to kind of figure out along the way. That That's, you know, layers deep. But like I said, it's just I was impressed with just how the, the housing was there. Um, for the same style and size and bedrooms, uh, house there in Arkansas, I was seeing like a, a four bed, two bath house in Arkansas, uh, was like anywhere from the one fifties to like two fifties. That same house here in Florida would be three fifties to four fifties. Like the same exact thing, just one state versus the other kind of thing. So it's just one of those, uh, just kind of have to weigh the options kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hillbilly Farmer says, no problem. Dust Bunny. Uh, let's see. Dust Bunny says, depending on where you are in Arkansas, the schooling is better in some areas than others. I mean, me personally, I'm going to avoid any large city like the plague. That's just me personally. I prefer to live out uh, more rural areas because I've lived in what I would call the city for almost 16 years now. I mean, in comparison to where I grew up. Where I grew up, when I was born till I was 8 years old, I lived on a 300-acre uh, farm kind of thing. It wasn't an active farm or anything like that. Um, but just the house was built in where a farm was. Um, and then when I was eight, we ended up the family, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the family, uh, when they made a decision because my dad's one of the younger siblings basically was forced into going along with everything. Cause the older siblings would basically say, okay, well we're doing X because we want the money. Um, we were living on the farm that the family owned at the time. So they decided that they wanted to subdivide the, the acreage and all that, and then sell it out, you know, parcel by parcel to, to make the most amount of money as possible. Well, we ended up using a part of that parceling to then carve out a piece for us. So we had, uh, 12 acres of land from that 300 acres, um, and I lived there until I was 20 years old. And after that, we ended up moving down here to Florida where we went to a half acre lot and yeah, lived, lived like that ever since kind of thing. So it was just one of those drastically different from what I grew up with. And, you know, dealing with all the, the, the noise and then the, 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 specifically the road noise and the neighbors. I, I'm just, I'm not big on having neighbors anymore, or at least having people that are so close to me to where that they're, the noise that they produce is actually intrusive into the home kind of thing. It's just, yeah, it's just not my, not my cup of, cup of tea anymore. Uh, let's see. Dust Bunny says, we don't get a lot of snow in town where I live. Uh, it's been, been here since 2006 and the most it's snowed was two feet and it lasted two weeks but only happened once uh sounds very similar to how it was when i lived in georgia because i was in northern georgia uh just north of atlanta for two years and we had one year where it snowed um you know i should probably actually be doing something not just chatting <laughs> um hmm see canola oats Ooh, i could use some oats field 30 where's field 30 30 30 30 30 oh there it is yeah let's let's harvest some oats 
We'll do one more contract and then we'll be probably in a good spot there. Let's see. I think we could probably send a worker to... All right. Uh, let's go over and figure out how to get to it. Uh, this way. There's 30. Let's see, there's 33. Is this 30? Oh, this is 30. Okay, perfect. So here, let's do... Okay, so it's right here next to the... Across the street from the carpentry. Okay, okay. Let's pull this out here. Let's see how the AI workers go on this uh, on this map. All right, so it looks like right there. Okay. Well, let's hook up to. Oops, I already turned that on. Ooh, I didn't think about this, but this is going to be... Huh. How am I going to do this? I'm sitting here thinking, where am I going to offload the trailer and whatnot to be able to hook up to the header? This is going to be really tight. I never... Whew. didn't really think about like you can see just how tight the driving is with the with these larger sets of equipment it can get really kind of squirrely depending on where uh, where we s decide to set up shop I'll have to figure out something though That's the main farm to the right. Let's see. I'll catch up with what everyone's saying in the chat in just a second. Unfortunately, now I have to kind of... Oh, you know what? There's the worker I hired way up yonder there. Oh, it looks like they're turning. Yes. Okay, they did turn. So, hopefully I can kind of keep them within, keep them with an eye shot. Oh, that's the carpenter right over there on the top of the hill. Okay, perfect. Oops. Okay. Yikes, the driving around here is really tight. Whew. I couldn't imagine being a farmer in the UK and whatnot. Having the having the equipment that you have and then needing to be able to get around to place to place. See, like yeah, look at that. How are how are you supposed to get in here and actually set up? Well, eh, okay, I, I think I gotta I think I got a good way to do it. Oops, there's a tree. Oh, see, yeah, there's a tree. Yeah, see, I couldn't imagine being a farmer. And, ooh, there's a little wide open area right there. And I don't know why I'm being so cautious. I could just drive onto the field. <laughs> I don't know why all of a sudden I'm sitting here like, oh, I can't, I can't drive onto the field. I can't do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
again, my, my brain works in mysterious ways. Let's see. Let's go. How does this field look? Okay. Now that that's going, let's uh, catch up the chat. Let's see. Uh, Dust Bunny says, usually if it snows less than a foot and melts pretty quick. Oh, that's what I was talking about. So when I lived up in Atlanta um, for two years, we, I think it was the second, the beginning of the second year, there was a snowfall and it was about three inches. And when I tell you that everyone and their mother lost their minds had no idea the entire city shut down completely every single job every single thing that that could cancel canceled literally everything just completely shut down there was no road maintenance there was nothing it was i mean it was when you're driving along, at least in the parts of Georgia that I was in, it was pretty, like, hilly. Um, I wouldn't say mountainous or anything, but pretty hilly. I mean, so, yeah, it made made driving a little squirrely, you know, with, uh, with the roads being covered in ice and all that stuff. But, I mean, being from Michigan and, and snow being such a, a big thing up there... Um, it was just another day in the park with me. My wife and I, we ended up getting in the car and I went driving around and um, it was funny, we ended up going to the Walmart park and even Walmart was shut down. Like that's how, how devastated people were for three inches of snow. But uh, yeah, they ended up, uh, we ended up going to the Walmart parking lot. We did donuts in the parking lot. And my wife, she was, oh, she was mad. She's like, because this is the first time she'd driven in snow ever. It was, it was one of those she may have driven in snow when she was really, really young, but couldn't remember it kind of thing. But it was just one of those where, you know, she's like, come on, let's go for a drive. And, you know, I want, really want to experience it. And, you know, it's the first time she's seen snow since she was a little, little, little kid kind of thing. So she wanted to go out and experience it and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll go for a drive. You know, one of those, you know, snow never bothered me kind of thing, being from Michigan. And <laughs> and when we got into the parking lot and I'm, I'm sitting there driving like a moron, you know, and I'm the only person, you know, in the parking lot doing this, or the only person in the parking lot, period. Um, she starts hollering at me, if you kill me, my dad will kill you, <laughs> kind of, kind of thing. And it was just, it was fun. And, and afterwards she had, you know, she had fun, but it was just one of those where, <laughs> uh, just, you know, good, good times, good times. You know, basically had all the, the roads and everything to ourselves. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, unfortunately, we have both state and federal taxes. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's similar to, to Georgia when I lived there and Michigan when I lived there. Um, the only thing I don't like about Arkansas are the tornadoes. Some have come close, but so far they always end up going around us. Well, that's, that's good at least. Um, is that uh, pretty common occurrence like every year like tornado season or something like that let's see I'm gonna drop down there we go yeah I know uh, like down here in Florida we have hurricane seasons typically you know typically anytime between uh, we'll say July to November. Uh, eh, really, November is not really uh, more, more like July to September, October-ish is hurricane season. Um, and as long as you don't see anything above a Category Three, you're pretty much fine. You know, you just see a lot of wind blowing and maybe the occasional, you know, thing blowing in the wind. 
Um, but people tend to do a fairly decent job for the most part on uh, you know either strapping down or putting things away that could be carried away. Um, so it's just one of those that, unless it's a complete devastation of a storm, unless you live on the coastline or something like that, it's normally not an issue. Um, or unless you, you get like a four or cat four or five hurricane kind of thing. Uh, I would honestly be more worried about tornadoes than I would about uh, the hurricanes. Um, but our biggest thing, uh, where we live here, um, we're, we're several miles away from the coast. We don't have to worry about flooding or anything like that. But it's one of those where, um, you know, if a big enough storm happens, you know, we still need to leave, you know, and get out of, get out of the area. And there's been, you know, there was Ian uh, a few years ago, uh, or was Ian last year? No, Irma. Irma was a few years ago, and we ended up having to leave for Irma. And that was one of the worst experiences I've ever gone through in my entire life, was having to evacuate on that particular one, because everyone started panic buying um, right away for it. And whenever people panic buy, gas always runs out, and food always runs out, and things like that. Um, and this was, honestly, this is back before I was as, as prep sure as I am nowadays. Um, you know, this is back when it was just my wife and I, you know, so it was one of those where, um, it was the dogs. It was my wife, myself, and, my, and our dogs. And, you know, we didn't have to, to really necessarily worry that much. But when the when a big one came through, when Irma came through, and it was projected to be, you know, going right through where we were, uh, or yeah, where we were, um, we ended up. At the time, I had an old Jeep Liberty, a 2003 Jeep Liberty, and we ended up having to get out of Dodge. We packed up all the the, the dogs, and we ended up having to evacuate, and we got up to North. Florida before we started uh, oh well we only got to North Florida because there was a huge traffic jam on the road that we were on and we were stuck in traffic for hours and it turns out the one gas station around was causing a line that was backed up onto the highway kind of thing um, so yeah everyone was stopping and everyone was just waiting for, for traffic to clear up enough to be able to to get gas and, and and whatnot but we were going past that station kind of thing well because we were sitting and waiting for so long we ended up running very low on gas and having to sleep in a gas station overnight that swore up and down that they were going to get a delivery in the morning well 6 a.m and we we're sleeping in the car later and the delivery never showed up so Thankfully, we got lucky. We found a, a gas station that had premium gas, um, and that's all they had. And it was just this little itty-bitty gas station, a little Amico in the middle of town kind of thing. And had we not turned off of the main road and found that gas station, we probably would have ran out of gas. They got out in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. So we got, we got very fortunate. But it was, yeah, one of the worst experiences we ever had to, had to deal with. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, are you going to collect the straw after you're done with the contract? Um, not right this second. I may consider uh, in the future picking up straw from contract fields, but... It's one of those that I don't necessarily want to um, start off right away by getting all this straw. And th this would be quite a bit of straw, um, even though I could very much use it. Um, like I say, it, it, I just don't think it would be good for the storyline right now to be 
coming out swinging from the gates like this kind of thing. So we'll, we'll, we'll hold off and refrain for, for now. But certainly, certainly going to be an option in the future. Let's see. Let's go ahead and hopefully unload this on the fly. Go. Oops. Come on, come on, tracker. Keep up, keep up. There we go. Okay, let me catch up with the chat. Um, let's see. Dustman says you can always use it for TMR and betting for your cows. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's definitely going to be in the cards. Not this particular contract, but it's definitely going to be... I'm, I'm definitely thinking in the future kind of thing. Like I said, us only being one episode in, I don't want to start... You know, gathering up all the all this excess supply right up at the at the gate, and then kind of overpower the story, kind of thing. Um, yeah, we're working contracts, and we made over a hundred thousand dollars so far in the span of three hours. Um, but I think that that this will be okay rather than. Uh, having this and a ton of straw that we can utilize right away kind of thing uh let's see just when he says the only business uh that will not close during any type of storm is waffle house yes what is up with that <laughs> i feel i feel so bad for for the employees there because you figure every at least every single waffle house i've ever seen it's always got the big plate glass windows you can always see right inside. So it's one of those, you got a, like a hurricane or tornado or something coming by, and all of a sudden you, you're, you're just, all you got is glass keeping you from whatever the wind is throwing. Like, oh, I, that's just, but hey, people got to get their waffles. <laughs> if they close, you know it's bad. Yes, yes, that's, that's when you know things are about to hit the fan. Uh, yes, uh, tornadoes can happen at any time during the year if the atmospheric conditions are favorable. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Uh, the two main tornado seasons are March to May and November to January. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed November to January, but I guess, yeah, I guess that makes sense because there's a lot of uh, storm cell activity around. I, I can see that. Well, what about, uh, and, and if you don't know this, this is fine. What about like northern Arkansas, like up there? Uh, I, I think it's what the Ozarks are right up there. Um, do they tend to see a lot of a lot of tornadoes up in there because of the the mountain range and all that? I wouldn't imagine that they would. I would think that that would kind of disrupt a lot of the tornado activity up in that area. That's my guess, though. Because that's kind of where we're. Again, if you know moving up there is in the cards um it'd be kind of like the northern portion of it is is kind of what we're thinking i'm not 100 percent sure though but yeah we're also we're thinking maybe tennessee kentucky um I mean, Mississippi, Alabama, I mean, just pretty much anywhere in the, like, the southern portion of the states. You know, like I said, we don't want to be so far away where, you know, it makes it difficult to travel, you know, back and forth, having to take, you know, a few hour plane ride back and forth to Florida and it being super expensive. But you typically, if you, you are, you know, in that kind of eight to 10 hour drive kind of zone kind of thing, then flights tend to be pretty cheap. Let's see, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off this contract, 
and then likely call it an evening. That's, uh, I think, how this is going to work. Where is this going? Where is this going? Where is that? Oh, the grain mill. Okay, where is the grain mill from here? So we're coming out this way. Oh, and then we got a... Is there like a side road that'll get me to where I need to go? Oh, there is in there. Yes, right here. And then... Tucked in here. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I need to need to make sure I pay attention for this little side road here, because that will save me a ton of time. Okay, so it's just the first uh, the first right after we leave the uh, the the bend here. Okay, yeah, that'll work just fine. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So you know what? Just out of curiosity, what does everybody think of the new uh, premium expansion? Uh, kind of a two-part question. What do they think of the map itself? The uh, Zelenka? Zelenka? I can't remember the name of it. Um, what does everybody think of the map? And what does everybody think of the tools, equipment, and... Uh, products that are now available with the premium expansion um, I'll go ahead and go first um, and anybody who's seen my map tour will will know this right off the bat I am not a fan of the map I, it's one of those that I actually you know I will give credit um, I believe it was Gordon uh, one of my one of my regulars I hear from um, who had pointed out that one of my one of my chief complaints of the map was that it just seemed very basic, very uh, squared off, worker friendly, not really much of a way of a challenge kind of thing, and that was kind of like my big kind of gripe against it. Well, Gordon ended up pointing out, well. Giants is going to lean towards making maps that are going to be more approachable to everybody, regardless of skill level and length of time they've been playing. And I got to thinking about it. It's like, wow, you know what? That's actually a really amazing point that I didn't consider when I was doing the tour and when I was kind of going about things. Um, and it, yeah, it makes sense. You got Elm Creek, you've got uh, Ho Bella Raw, you got. Silver Run is kind of the outlier to that one because Silver Run's kind of a nuisance because it's such a logging heavy map. But even the farming aspect, the farming three fields they have on there are very basic square fields, all clustered together kind of thing. Um, but then you've got uh, the Horsh Aggravation as well as the um, Zelenka. Um, all those main kind of farming, quote unquote, arable farming maps, um, are all extremely basic kind of, kind of maps. And, and, and I don't mean basic as a, as a negative, it's just like square fields and, and no real quote unquote challenges and, and no sweeps in the, in the fields and anything like that. So it's one of those where... The map itself really doesn't appeal to me, even with that being said. Um, but now I can kind of better appreciate it. Um, to where I feel like with that little bit of information from Gordon, it kind of seemed... Uh, at, least I, at least I can understand it now. At least I can kind of c come to terms with it to whereas before I was very kind of like nah not 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 really interested kind of I think I gave it a two and a half and I still stick by that I still stick by the rating I gave it out of uh, two and a half out of five 
Um, but it's one of those where, at the end of the day, I can at least say, okay, Giants being catering to everyone and not just the established players or, or things like that, um, they are trying to open up the market to anybody who wants to come and play the game to where people who are in the modding community or whatnot, they're going to make mods that are going to be more suited to their gaming style, their way of doing things. And that's where we're going to start seeing the kind of maps and stuff that me personally am going to be more interested in playing. The ones where there's you know, either challenges in the layout, challenges in the fields, you know, all that kind of stuff in general. I mean, this map here is, you know, I'm gonna, I, is somewhat, you know, it's got somewhat challenging uh, fields. You got some of the round off kilter fields. You got a lot of squared off fields, but you also have the very kind of tight uh, access to them, being able to set up your equipment. If you got crop destruction turned on, that's going to be a factor because you've got all the fields that, and, uh, the tight spaces, the tight roads, like all that stuff is going to be kind of playing into account in a map like this to where, oops, I was hoping to get to him before he turned. Oh, well, come on, you can do it. Um, so yeah, all that being said, I, I wasn't impressed with Zelenka, Zelonka, however it's pronounced. Um, but I actually really like the crops, the, the three new crop types that they put in and all that stuff. I like the way that you can harvest with it. Um, the only thing I don't care for that I wish, which will likely, very, very likely be solved with mods. Um, I very much appreciate the mods that allow you to take potatoes and sugar beets and harvest them from the ground and put them onto the ground and then you could use a bit of equipment such as the forage header pickup um, or a bucket or whatever to be able to get it up off the ground so that way you can just have the worker just go 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 they don't have a limited capacity because of the capacity uh, the yield on potatoes, sugar beets, and all, just root crops in general are just massive. So even if you've got 30,000 liters of storage in your in, of capacity in your machine, it still doesn't get you that far. You're still having to make so many trips back and forth uh, on a single field. But that's why I like those, uh, like the Grimmy Pack, uh, where you can take the potatoes out of the earth and then just lay it down on the ground kind of thing you can hire a worker to do that for you uh kind of thing um same thing with a sugar beet harvester uh they've got certain sugar beet harvester where you can you know rip it out from the ground and then just go from there kind of thing figure out a way to pick it up off the ground it's really nice to be able to for in my opinion to do that um So I, I hope that you know the modern, modding community will, will use that as an opportunity to kind of advance uh, that portion of the modding, uh, you know, to, to, to add those as options. Now, if you do the harvesting manually, I find that the base game equipment allows you to dump it out on the ground, but you got to do the, the harvesting manually. Um, but if you're going to do that, you might as well just get a big old trailer and ride beside the worker as they as they pull up the stuff from the ground kind of thing you know it's really no different at that point you're kind of saving a step there we go so i like the i like the new products i like the um productions i like the equipment uh, I like the boxes. That's actually something I didn't think that I was going to like um, when I started seeing it kind of discussed is the kind of box system. But I like that you can buy the boxes from the machine itself. That's really nice. Because then you can just put down boxes in the middle of the field and just go from there. So you can still hire a worker and you don't have to like wait around and tag along with a trailer kind of thing. Um, you can just buy a box and 
fill up the box, and once the box is full, you have to manually stop the worker, drop it off uh, into the field, and just kind of move on from there. All that being said, it, it's just it's something new, and it's nice. I, I like that portion of it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I think so far. Let me catch up with the chat and see what everyone's saying. This was the grain mill, right? Grain mill, yep. Okay. Alright, let's see what the chat says. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, Tex, how's it going? Uh, let's see. I still have a hard time using the new crops and the old game saves. Yeah, um... If you had a previously established save game, I don't know how well they would integrate in... Wow, 60% already? Okay, cool. Um, I don't know how well they would integrate to old saves, but uh, let's see. Dust Bunny says, uh, another weird thing that's annoying is the Giants didn't even put a silo on the map or an inventory that could store the new crops. So f that's actually... Um, Yes and no. You don't have a base game storage method. Yes. But what you can do is if you store the crops in a box uh, and use that kind of box system that they have, uh, you can use... And I've tried it, and it did work. These, the bale and pallet storage. Um... These will accept those boxes, and they will store just like that. So it's not the traditional silo system uh, that we're used to. Um, but I have seen some mods that uh, work with the new crops as well. Um, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, this map actually has the uh, mods built in. Or the... the, the Ba, 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 uh, uh, words are hard. Um, the new crops. The new crops all built in. Uh, and actually, we're on the road to my farm. Let's let's go to my silo just real quick because I I mm, no the, the crops or the the silos on this map are modified uh, to be uh, multi fruit crops or multi fruit silos. So. That's also playing into a factor, but one of those where it is a nice little feature. I do love coming over this ridge right here and seeing the farm just kind of come into come into view right there. Just, it's really nice. I, that's part of the reason why I chose this farm is the view coming into it. And it's kind of built into this little valley here. because I'm not even anywhere close to the discharge. Or... Huh. Does it not let you... Oh, there it is. Start filling. Okay. Whew. I was about to say. Uh, oh, yep, there we go. Carrots, uh, parsnips, and red beets. So, yeah, that's that's really nice. I do like how Cavalier Roy uh, modified all the silos at all the farms to be able to be like full multi fruit silos. Let's see. Uh, ooh, I'm missing out on a lot of the conversation. We'll get back to the get back to the contract, and then I'll read what everyone's saying up until this point. And now that we're coming from this direction, I have no idea where my turn is. <laughs> I should have thought of that. I think it's I think it's right up here on the left. Uh, no, not there. 
Is this it? Yep, this is it, right here. And there's my tire tracks to prove it. Yeah, so we'll get back to the field and then I'll read the chat and figure out what everyone's what everyone's saying up into this point. Turn here. I tell you what, I really do like the landscape of this uh, of this map. The kind of just gentle rolling hills and I do like it. I like it a lot. Let's see. Do we have flashing beacon? No. Nope. Sweet. Oh, 70%. Phew. Nice. Uh, let's see. Despony says, and the buildings on the farm are pretty much useless. You can't store anything in them because you can't get a tractor in the doors. Yes, 100%. Uh, Tex says the silo on new farmer mode on the new map will take the new crops. Oh, okay. Uh, Tex says I watched several content creators doing gameplays and none of them have been able to put the new crops in the silo on the main farm. Tex says I just bought the game like three months ago so I got the new DLC for free. Oh, nice. Uh, there are no auto load trailers. For the console players that will pick up boxes from the field either yes that that is a nuisance because the boxes just naturally force you to you know go through the pallet system you know the whole you know for, either forklifts i mean you could use like the 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 csz pack uh big bag handler or the uh what is it the the john deere nope uh front loader tools uh, there it is, the big bag winch. Uh, you could use these and just use the straps. I, I tend to use those whenever I'm just kind of going around messing around kind of thing. That's what I like to use to be able to kind of make my life a little easier when dealing with boxes and pallets. Um, let's see. Tex says, uh, when I try to harvest, game just dies. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Uh, Dustman says... Uh, Maybe a mod conflict? Yeah, yeah, that's that definitely sounds like it's a possibility. Tex says, I tried uh, no mods and a few mods still won't work. Oh, really? Um, Dustman says, uh, oh dear, that's not good. Are you on PC or console? Uh, yes, that... Uh, I'm curious of the same thing. Whether or not uh, this could potentially be... Uh, And if you and if you are on console text, um, which console are you on? Are you on maybe oh PC? Ooh, so that's uh, that's a wrinkle. I don't know, uh, don't know what that would be. So it's not, obviously not a mod conflict because you uninstalled the mods or you at least unchecked the mods. Um, hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I play on console, so I, I'm not great at diagnosing the issues. Might be something that you want to uh, report to Giants and put into their ticketing system. Maybe it's a issue with maybe maybe your particular game, or I don't know if any. I haven't heard anybody else uh, have an issue like that. Not to say it's not out there, but just not something I've heard. Come on, keep up. There we go. Perfect. Pull this out to the side. Oops. All right, a couple more passes, we'll be good to go. Uh, let's see. Just when he says, no, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, uh, Tex, I would I would consider putting in a uh, ticket uh, with Giants in their 
uh, tech support or, or whatever they call it the the whatever their support system is um, might be something that they help you out with I know I've put in uh, a ticket a time or two especially really early on uh, when FS22 like first released and they were really really good about following up and, and you know helping out as best as they could um, with the issues I was reporting to them so yeah definitely definitely look into doing that because who knows I mean it could it could be like a local PC issue might I mean who knows I'm not uh, not 100% sure and more than likely, if you're experiencing that issue, more than likely you're not the only person. Um, so, let's see. Uh, Tech says, uh, but the problem might be that uh, might be the two 16x maps I have playing on. Oh, so that yeah, that might be the issue. Is it might be specifically the map that's the issue. Um, hmm. Destiny says, uh, I'm going to wait at least a couple weeks before I even think about buying it. Uh, if the problems are not fixed by then, I'll keep waiting. Uh, Destiny also says, I get lost literally on 16x maps. <laughs> yes, it's. I couldn't imagine playing on a, a map that large. Um, I mean, you figure we get, uh, on consoles, we get the, what, the two, 2x maps? So you figure that's... <laughs> that's considerably larger than uh, what what us on consoles would get. So to kind of give scale, if this is a two so a two x by two x map, imagine eight more of these. Like that's that would be ridiculous, the amount of size on on that map. Couldn't imagine it. Couldn't imagine playing on a map that large. Tech says, uh, love my big fields. Uh, farming 1,500. Oh, wow. 1,500 acres? Holy smokes, Tex. That's, <laughs> that's insane. Now, see, what's really cool, though, is that because you're on PC... You get uh, solo. Do you do uh, like the follow me mods and, and do all that kind of stuff to where you can have multiple uh, multiple harvesters, multiple you know sets of equipment kind of running all at the same time? Uh, let's see, sixteen X maps are really huge and very graphic intensive. Yes, I could only imagine. You got to have a decent uh, PC to be able to to make that work. Uh, Destiny says my son plays on a sixteen X map. And loves it. He also plays solo. Whew. Now, out of curious, Tex, uh, which uh, which map are you playing on? Uh, the 16x. I'm I'm just curious because I'd love to be able to go on the mod hub and see just what the map actually looks like. Yes, follow me in course play. Yes, yeah. The, I would imagine that those mods are essential for for a map like. That, that 16 acts. I mean, really, it, it'd be almost essential on any map that, uh, regardless of size, if uh, if you're on PC. Th those are honestly like the... Oh, hey, you're on Michigan. <laughs> That's my old neck of the woods. Like, literally, I used to used to live in, uh, in Ann Arbor uh, in Michigan. And, yeah, it was... Uh, Right, right by here on so very familiar <laughs> so now I just now I want to bring that up I'll uh, I'll make a note to see what it looks like all right we are on the last pass here. Oh, you know what? Oh, this is a bummer. It just dawned on me. I'm harvesting oats. With the oats 
and with the hay that I harvested on my field, I could have had horses. Could have done horses with this. I, I used all the hay over with the sheep. So, eh. I'll wait until the next harvest and load them out. Oh, you know what? It just dawned on me. I have to give a shout out to my channel members, specifically my tier twos. So, want to give a shout out to Mark K. Thank you very much for being my tier two channel member. Uh, unfortunately, Mark is the lone uh, tier two at the moment, so, which is fine. Um, greatly appreciate you, Mark, being a tier two member. If you are interested in being a member of the channel, go ahead and go to the main page there on my channel and click on the join button. You'll gain access to perks such as early access to edited content, such as the uh, episodes as well, or the Let's Play episodes as well as the shorts. You will also get custom emojis, custom badges, and tier two members will get a shout out at every single live stream that I do um, each tier is you know obviously different values tier one you're gonna get uh, at 99 cents a month tier two at 499 a month and that money goes straight into the uh, sustainability and growth of this channel again greatly appreciate everybody out there who is a channel member and greatly appreciate everybody who is a subscriber or just casual follower of this channel i greatly appreciate every single one of you and yeah this is the first stream that we've done since getting a thousand subscribers like that that just still to this very second still blows my mind that we have a thousand subscribers on this channel i'm just huh, just dumbfounded and just so glad that we keep keep finding new people we keep building this community and making it such an amazing and fun place to be like i said every single time i come on to a live stream every single time i get to interact with everybody i just have an absolute ball just absolute ball just sitting here and having you know having a, a great conversation you know with people all over the world so let me again thank every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. I genuinely appreciate every single one of you. And yeah, let's let's keep this train moving. Let's keep on pushing. And you know, let's let's like Jody said early in the stream, you know, let's get to 2000 subscribers. Let's get to 3000. Let's just keep on keeping on. You know, I'm going to keep putting in the work to get us there and you know, hope that uh I keep putting out the content that uh, people find entertaining, that people you know want to subscribe to and, and follow along with. You know, it's that is where we are at with this channel, and it's just like I keep saying, it's humbling. I really. really cannot believe that we're here that we're that we're at a thousand subscribers and that you know the potential of continuing is still there kind of thing all right let's see keep her butt hand over the button all right three thousand liters that's not it's not bad. Not bad at all, actually. Let's see. All right, so we're going to go throw this into the silo. We'll collect on the contract and go from there. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I am going the right direction. I had to sit there and think about it for a second. It's like, wait a minute. Did I, did I make the wrong turn? <laughs> we are one episode in. I'm still learning. <laughs> I 
and it's funny because I was uh, I was kicking around the idea of opening up a poll and seeing what everyone thought about you know what map I should go to and I had it down to three maps in particular this one here Maple Farm um, Purebeck 22 and um, the Forgotten Isle. Those were the three maps I was considering going to after the Hills of Tuscany, Tuscany kind of went belly up um, with everything that went on there. Um, and I was considering opening a pool to kind of gauge everyone and see what people thought. Um, I, I decided not to do that though. I decided just to go with this one because I felt that this one would allow us the opportunity to kind of be more dynamic. Um, and don't get me wrong, I really like Purebeck and I really, really like the Forgotten Isle. Um, but I felt like the Forgotten Isle would have been kind of. Uh, one direction like wouldn't have had a lot of room to to spread out and be able to do different things there we go five thousand look at that we made over a hundred thousand dollars in just this let's play so i am i am thrilled i am absolutely thrilled that we we got so much done today um but I mean, so far I'm just I, I I think that this one was the better of the of the three choices. Um, Purebeck I think would have been fine, but I think Purebeck has a very um, a very realistic tone to it. Like it, it's so the way I kind of describe each one of these maps is this map is incredibly dynamic and really is available to whatever direction it, it it can flow like water is basically how i i would describe this map is it's really up to the individual and how they want to play it purebeck is like the more realistic representation of the three maps and um just really kind of would have leaned into more of a realistic kind of gameplay experience and then the Forgotten Isle was like the, the fantasy, the very kind of out there. And I don't want to say fantasy as, as much as it's just kind of uh, it leans itself to almost a quote unquote marshland kind of swampy. Um, I mean, could be kind of fairy tale esque kind of feel to it. Um, but I don't know. It just. One of those that this one kind of edged out everything because of how dynamic it is and how it, it kind of lends itself to being able to be manipulated along the way. So there's just far more options with this map than the other two held. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Tech says, Huron County and Western Australia, uh, 16X. Okay, okay. Uh, Dust Bunny says, I just wish more of your subscribers would join in the live streams. Uh, you know what? I would absolutely love that too. Um, but I also understand that uh, a lot of a lot of people aren't available when I'm available. Um, that's honestly one of the biggest, um, biggest issues that I have as a content creator is I only have between the hours of 9 a.m. Or I'm sorry, 9 a.m. 9 30 p.m um until whenever i go to bed uh to to create content and to, and to do everything that I, that i do for this channel that's i really got that kind of three ish hour window of being able to do this and it's because you know i'm a family guy and I, my my daughter is going on to be two years old and and you know she and my wife are the priority in my life you know, I love being able to do YouTube. I love this as, as a kind of, you know, thing to do after she goes to bed and my wife, you know, goes to lay down kind of thing. But it's just one of those, um, 
you know, they they will they will always be you know number one, kind of thing. So just one of those that I know people work. I know people have you know lives outside of of you know of YouTube and things like that. So it's just one of those that you know I'm I'm fortunate to be able to to get this to get the people that I can get, you know, for for the live streams. You know, and, and like I said, I'm grateful to every single one of you who join the live stream and hang out with me and have have such great conversations and, and be able to to hang out. I absolutely love it. And I would love for everybody to be able to join in on, on these. But I understand that also that it's it's a very competitive window, a very competitive window of time and a very late window of time. So it's one of those that it's very, very hard to, you know to work around that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Tex says, congrats on the 1K. Hey, thanks, Tex. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, uh, YouTube is not always good about notifications. No, so what I do to try to help out with the whole notifications issue is um, I've got several social medias. Uh, you know, I can go ahead and just plug those uh, really quickly. Um so let me go to my page and I can pull them all up real fast. Let's see. Nope, that's the wrong page. Where is... Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so I am on Instagram at bddgaming underscore 22. I am on Facebook at... Oh, no, for some reason it doesn't tell me. I believe it's bdd gaming um b -b 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 i'm sorry no no that's instagram sorry i'm looking at it on my screen here real quick yeah i think it's bdd gaming uh twitter is bdd gaming 2022 or, or what is now x i guess is what they call it um so yeah to work around the notifications i always try to put out uh, additional notifications both in the main YouTube kind of uh, post system that they have as well as uh, loading out as early as possible typically around 12 uh, p.m. Eastern is about the latest I will well eh, about 1 o'clock uh, p.m. will be about the latest I will put a notification out there to say um this is the time at which I'm going to stream on YouTube locally. And then I'll also push it out on each one of those platforms. Like I said, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter, now X, um, to let everybody know that, hey, this is the time in which I'm going to be streaming and give locations and all that stuff to, to be able to follow. Uh, let's see. Dust Money says, uh, that is very true. I get notifications for BDD on my phone but they never show up on my computer. Uh, that's so frustrating. I, I know YouTube is always so terrible about, uh, you know, pushing out notifications reliably. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get emails. Sometimes you'll get an actual push notification. Sometimes you'll get it on your phone. Sometimes you won't. It's just, it's a pain. It is a pain sometimes, but, it is what it is. That's why I go through the extra efforts to, you know, try and push it out on, on other social medias other than YouTube to try and, you know, make sure everybody who wants to can see it. Um, so, yeah, that's... Oh, wow, we're already up to 17% fermented. Sweet. That's awesome. That's 150,000 liters of silage there, which will likely pick that all up, sell it off, and get money for it because again we're gonna we're gonna start with sheep this is this is the uh this is where we're going 156,000 liters of food of hay in here already and you can see just by the boxes here this isn't even close to being full this may be half maybe a quarter full based on kind of the visual representation so it's one of those uh yeah we, it's probably going to eat a lot of food but the really cool thing is because you have, what it was, 800 sheep, I think? seven or 800? Yeah, 800. Um, 
when you got this thing fully churning out, you're going to be producing wool like none other. That's what I'm really looking forward to is to see the amount of productivity that we get with the amount of animals that we have. But, uh, yeah, I think... I think this is going to be a good chance for us to start winding this down and drawing the stream to a close because it is almost 1 o'clock in the morning and I actually have a very early morning uh, tomorrow. My wife and I are actually going to take our daughter to a local uh, uh, like trampoline park. Um, they have kids' hours uh, tomorrow and yeah it, she we, my wife ended up taking her to uh this place uh last week and she had an absolute ball she was just running around you know she didn't really understand the concept of the trampoline like how you could just like jump on it and bounce but yeah she had an absolute ball she was just running around you know wore out a ton of energy and yeah it was just it was fun to see uh but we're going to take her there in the morning and whatnot. But like I said, I'm going to draw this to an end. Thank you all so very, very much for coming out tonight, hanging out and having a, a you know, having a, again, a great conversation. I really, really appreciate everyone who stopped by tonight. I hope every single one of you has a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. You know what? Let's do the sign off and we'll go from there. But I hope Everybody enjoyed the episode tonight. Or the wow, it is late. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed the stream tonight. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing. The shows you're engaged with this channel, and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope everybody has a fantastic day, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care. <laughs>